Live from the Toad Hop Network Studios in Hollywood. This, this is the ToadHopNetwork.com. A place of our own without a lot of parents peering down our back. Radio worth watching. And here we go. Hello, Schmoville. That's right. It's the Schmoes No Podcast, and Mark Ellis has never looked prettier. <laughs> Sitting next to me on my right is not Mark Ellis. It is Tiffany Smith. Yeah. Tiffany, you're in the pilot seat. a little, seat. like, body change. You're like goose. Tonight. You know. I love it. How you doing, Tiff? I wear a dress and everything. I know. you just for Schmoville, right? I really had to show Mark up. Yeah, you did. Trust me, you <laughs> did. It's not very tough. Uh, Mark Ellis, uh, my good buddy, is out of town. He's at Fort Lauderdale, I believe at the Improv. Uh, he will tweet me if that is incorrect. But if you guys are out in Fort Lauderdale, you should see him this weekend because he'll be there with mm-hmm. John Caprillo, a very funny comedian. Um, oh. But we're not here to promote Mark Ellis. We're here to promote the Schmoes No Podcast. Great show tonight, and uh, a lot of really fun stuff. We're going to talk about all the movie news that happened, you know, for the first half an hour, and talk about some cool things that went down. Um, there's a little bit of a drama that is going on in the Schmoes No podcast that we want to let Schmoville kind of get there their two cents in regarding the Star Wars Episode 7 fantasy draft. Big news going to go down on that in this half an hour. Um, and then 8.30 is really cool. Ain't really cool. Really cool. Because we, <laughs> Tiffany, you've known to be a, a fan of some comic books. Indeed I am. Here and there. Yeah. Um, we have, Also a fan of Hannah Montana. Uh, yeah. Also a fan of House. <laughs> of House. All right. So <laughs> what Tiffany is getting at is our guest who's going to be calling in is Lucas Till, a.k.a. Havoc from the yeah. X-Men films. And the brand new film, Paranoia, is going to be calling in at 830. And we're going to talk to him about his brand new movie, what it was like working. He worked with Gary Oldman for a little bit on the in the movie. He's with a lot of people, this guy. This kid and is. He's like pretty young. He's young. He's like 23, 24. Yeah. But this kid, I'll tell you what, like, and I'm going to talk to him about this when I talk to him. He, you, he's going to be around for a while. And there's a reason why I really thought that when I saw this movie, this paranoia movie, mm-hmm. and we'll talk to him when he calls in. So that's going to happen at 8 30. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and we're going to read some of Schmoville's questions. It's that really weird asked. having Facty in my seat. Yes. I know, I know. Well, I'm like, okay, hi. what's up? Well, that's, <laughs> well, I just kind of took it. Yeah. Well, Mark Riley is sitting there right now, but Naveed McElargy, our good yeah. buddy, um, president of Film, Film Engine, will be sitting there. He's going to be co hosting from 8 to 9. And then Aaron Darling will be here from 9 to 10. Love so, girls in yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, a really fun show. And from 9 to 10 when Aaron's here, we're going to be talking about all the X-Men movies. Everything, we're going to be talking about X-Men 1, X-Men 2. X-Men I just rewatched the first one and First Class today, and I was like, I remember oh, how watched, amazing they are. Yeah, you watched the good ones. Yeah, yeah I did. Uh, now, why don't you go paint yourself and go watch Origins? Well... You know, yeah. I like to keep it with the Wolverine that just came out on the happy side of things. And we'll definitely be talking about that movie as well. Uh, but, again, that's that's what's coming up in the future. So if you have a DeLorean, go watch th- that part of the show. But if you don't, stick with Kenny right now because we're going to do the news. The best engineer in the business, Johnny Ice, gearing it up. Here we go. I'm Ken Napsok, and these are your no headlines brought to you by Magic Hat Brewing Company. Earlier today, director James Cameron announced plans to make three more films in the Avatar franchise. Along with the already expected sequel in 2016, he will release one in 2017 and another in 2018. They have been titled Fern Gully 2, Fern Gully 3, and Fern Gully 4. Oh, bastard. Universal Pictures is said to have found a director for their Scarface reboot. Reboot, Reboot. and it is David Yates, best known for directing the Harry Potter movies in which it was kind of okay to look at Hermione Granger. Yates will join Brian De Palma and De Palma and Howard Hawks. <laughs> wear the beer. suit. You got to wear the suit. As the three directors to tell the Scarface story on film, no word in the exact plot details other than Universal plans to update the story and make it more contemporary. I.e., all the cocaine will now be Avengers comic books. <laughs> At Comic-Con, one of the big new news items to pop on day one was that even in cosplay outfits, girls hate Ken Napsuck. But another one was that there appears Stop to be a Flash it. movie coming in 2016, though that was never officially confirmed. Well, now we know that Flash is at the very least coming to television as the CW Network has fast-tracked the development and production of a Flash TV show. The series will launch in fall 2014 and spring from the well-received CW series Arrow. It is being developed by Arrow head honchos Andrew Kreisberg and Greg Berlanti. At the same time, uh, Kreisberg. CW has put the Wonder Woman prequel show titled Amazon on hold due to script issues, but CW insists that the series will happen. In the meantime, Aquaman invites you to check out his blog, Swimming with Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> dot blogspot dot tumblr dot interwebs. 
<laughs> While promoting the world's end during an interview with The Age, actors and BFFs Simon Pegg and Nick Frost both said that they do not want to be in the Star Wars Episode Seven project as they are both too big of fans to want to mess it up. Pegg stated, when I was a... Uh, when I was a, I, when I saw Star Wars as I was a kid, I saw a bunch of people I'd never seen before with some lofty, very respectable older actors in senior roles. I hope JJ doesn't stunt cast a film. It would be great to get some new peeps in it. It would be amazing. End quote. So expect the Love official that. announcement of Simon Pegg and Star Wars Episode Seven any day now. Yeah. Someone uh, who does want to be involved in Episode 7 is John Williams. Lucasfilm head cheese Kathleen Kennedy told the press this week that the upcoming films will be story-based and light on CGI, meaning the lens flares will be real, and also confirmed that Williams will be on board to make sure at least something in the new movie is good. And finally, sadly, actress... Sorry. Actress Whoa. Eileen Bredin <laughs> died this week at the age of 80. Her career started in New York theater in the 60s before transitioning into TV and film. Her two signature roles were seen selling performances opposite Goldie Hawn in 1980's Private Benjamin as Mrs. Peacock in 1985's Clue, where she went toe-to-toe with several of the best comedic actors of the era. And Michael Keane, Madeline Kahn, Christopher Lloyd, Martin Mull, and a personal favorite of mine. Rest in peace, Mrs. Peacock. I'm going to go home now and sleep with my wife. I'm Ken Apsock with those of your Schmoes No Headlines. Brought to you by Magic Hat Brewing Company. For more news, be sure to head to schmoesnow.com for remo- reviews, news, and clues back up starting tomorrow. No, no, no listen. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait a minute here. He didn't we, drink Magic Hat. No, before. wait a minute, Ken. Now, I, I really yeah. appreciate everything you do. Oh, yeah. Week yeah. in and week out. Yeah, yeah. What happened? <laughs> I, uh, What's going on with you tonight? Work's been tough. The work's been tough. Work's like, been tough. You look like either you yeah. should be in the Flamingo Kid movie with Gary Marshall yeah. or like a extra in Goodfellas. I haven't, I <laughs> haven't seen either of those <laughs> movies. Um, yeah. what is, yeah. what is, that's not an insult. You don't want to mess with been, his head. It's been uh, tough. Now, yeah, you, don't, you, you, seem, you seem a little agitated. Little, that, not that, agitated. That, 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 that's not agitated. You're speaking like me on the news you're, now. Yeah, you seem, you, you <laughs> seem a little, li- I little I off put. Off put. I can't share my public, uh, private life publicly. It's just right. uh, my day job has been very tough. I oh, spent yeah. some time with the Bomb Squad. You can ask everybody Saturday. else about it on your podcast. You just yeah. can't talk about it. Well, I can talk about it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I had a, a bomb incident at a device in my property. Whoa. Spent hours with the Bomb Squad, including a, a, a robot. Wow. Uh, Johnny Five came out. And wow. uh, it's been just a tense stressful okay, so week, gonna, so I'm right, a little right, distracted. Well, that's a good excuse. You that's just, no excuse for bad no, performance. That wasn't a bad performance. <laughs> it wasn't a bad performance. Look, you that's dropped, what she said. You dropped a bomb. We're going to drop a bomb. Mark Riley has been working on the website. We're going to get to yeah. those news stories in a second here. Because a lot of you guys keep asking every day, and I love that you guys keep asking, what's going on with the website? How come there's no news stories? Well, here's the news. Mark Riley is going to give you an update. What's going on with the site? Fact to me, factors in. And Naveed McElargy walking in here. So let's get uh, Naveed in that in All Ken's right. seat, and we can get uh, an update from Mark Riley. Mark, what's going on with the website? Today? Well, the website is going to be back up tomorrow. Yay! Everybody. Great. Tomorrow. Posting yeah. and everything. Okay. Posting and everything. There'll be news uh, that you know back on schedule. Okay. Um, for for you guys that don't know, uh, Schmoville's like totally awesome. Yeah. Because <laughs> we were when you guys were at Comic-Con. Uh, Comic-Con and all the news was coming in and I was uh, you know doing all the updates and everything. You guys broke the server. <laughs> you guys broke the Crashed internet. It. Yeah. Uh, and and what happened was is that because schmoesno.com became so popular, our hosting uh, server yeah. black flagged us. They so, said you, you have too many people coming so on this we get, website. So now we got to update it. We're, yeah, we're updating. We got to update. Yeah. So we're back now. Yeah. yeah, but now we're so we're back online tomorrow. All the news stories will be yep. we posted. You're gonna get all the news, uh, all the reviews, everything. We are back on uh, on track where we were uh, two weeks ago. So thanks for holding in there, and Riley, thanks for um, taking care of it. Yeah, and sorry, Schmoville. Sorry, it's been down. That's from uh, editor in chief here. I've been sorry that it uh, we haven't been posting, but uh, tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow's the day. Get excited. All right, and we're also excited because joining us once again. On the podcast, I believe this is his third time on the show, and he's going to be co-hosting from eight to nine. Second, third. Oh, I called him once. No, Dickface, you were here with uh, with uh, with Captain <laughs> That's Reitman. That's really the way to get people keep coming. Captain <laughs> Reitman. Oh, way back when. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So you called in also. So that's like four yeah, times. Okay. Yeah. So Naveed Mac. Naveed Mac. I heard Larchie. Tiffany was an address, so I raced over. I know. I know. <laughs> Naveed Macalarchi, uh, president of Film Engine, our good buddy, and a guy that we gave a lot of props to last week because he hooked up a lot of stuff at Comic Con and. We gave you a lot of props last week. I don't know if you heard the show. I didn't. Sorry. You know everyone. 
Yeah. You do know a lot of people. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you really do, dude. There's like, no hesitation in that. Like, He's just like, yeah. yeah no, he does. I mean, look, we're going to talk about the news in a second here, but it, it, would be, it would not be fair to not give you your props because, right. like, you got us into – because, again, Zach Levi is going to be on the show calling in, and you, you helped facilitate that, so thank yep. you for that. Yep. Uh, and you got us into that party into where we met Nathan Fillion and we met um, we met Kit Harrington and they're all buddies of yours. Yep. So how did you go – how did you meet all those guys? Well, the funny one is Kit. Yeah, how'd you, from Kit, John we're talking John Smith. Snow. From, yeah. How'd you meet Kit? <laughs> well, uh, two years ago at Comic Con, mm-hmm. did I ever? Did I not tell you guys this? Story? Well, you're telling yeah, us right yeah, now. You're telling story. us right now. Uh, two years ago at Comic Con, I I was notorious for on the Thursday night having a massive party in my room every year. Yeah, and I had been out drinking. I think I, I had a four thousand dollar bar tab, <laughs> and well uh, done. and I was wasted. And yeah. at two thirty in the morning, there's a knock on my door. And I didn't have the suite that year. And there's a knock on my door, and it's David Benioff and Dan Weiss, who Dan Weiss yeah. is a friend of mine. They're the creators nice. of yeah. Game of Thrones. And there's a knock on the door, and they're standing outside. They're like, Navid. I'm like, yeah. They're like, you going to have the party? I was like, I guess. Come on in. <laughs> and I literally looked down the hall, and there's about 40 to 50 people lined Holy up shit. behind them. At and getting into your room? All coming into my awesome. room. And I didn't have the suite that year. There were like, uh, that's how I met Kit. <laughs> Kit was, there was a lot of the cast of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his face? Um, Jamie Lannister was nice. there. And John, Jam- uh, who, uh, boy, I was a lot of dogs. Yeah. I don't have a name. Nicolaj. 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 Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. And and uh, one of my coworkers kept going up to him calling him sister fucker. Um, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> that, that'll, that'll go well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I then, like that he curses and looks at me and goes, uh, can, can I say this? Yeah. Well, she's going to say no. Dr. Who was jumping on my bed. Nice. Yeah, he was at the party too. Yeah, yeah, we met him. We met him also. So it's uh, so again. So this is uh, Naveed is uh, help working a lot with Winkleman to get a lot of people on the show, and it's been working really well. So Naveed, thank you. Pause very much. though, I have a really big question. Yeah. So why was there not this massive awesome party for us right, this, this year. year? What happened? I slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I'm okay. getting old. Before yeah. Comic Con, he was like, "So I'm going to show you how awesome Comic Con is, Tiffany, since it's your first one." And I get there, and I'm like, "What the what?" Man? A year full of it. We went to. We <laughs> he did. Yeah, no, he but totally you, did. But you had so much fun, and we had that night. I had a that good time night all at this part. Oh, he's unbelievable. You just can't give him enough, can you? <laughs> just can't give him enough. It's okay. All right, here I we go. I deserve it. Naveed, there's a couple of stories going around that we all want to, um, you know, throw our opinions on. And the, the first one was: you hear about this Scarface reboot that they're going to do? Yeah, I just read about it. So they're saying David Yates is is going to do this thing. David Yates is doing everything. And David, what do you, what do you mean by that? What he's else is doing he doing? Tarzan. But then I, they Warners. said he's not linked to that anymore, though. That's they what did today? That, that's what one of the. That's what I heard. It was, I heard they it was, was rumor. back up. Oh, maybe I don't okay. know. Because now is this the same one that? Because there was Craig Brewer was attached to one as well. Yeah, yeah Craig. Different. Craig. And they were developing two at the same time. Yeah. And Craig was developing one, and they took a lot of his ideas and molded it into the one that David was doing. Okay, that makes sense. Um, all right, so then. If we're going to get Yates attached to this thing, I mean, look, the fourth Harry Potter movie, third one's still my favorite, but the fourth one is still pretty dark. Yep. And you know that he can handle a dark tone. It's just a matter of how they're going to make Scarface modern. Do we need another Scarface movie? Uh, why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm, not, I'm not against it. If, if it works, it works. Yeah. Right. It could well, be, it could be terrible like totally Carlito's Way too. a reboot, right? Like they're not <laughs> yeah. saying it's a continuation. It's Well, no, it would be a reboot. I mean, because, I mean, look, the first, the Al Pacino, I mean, the Al Pacino yeah. Scarface was a reboot. Yeah. I mean, that was off the, yeah. the 1930s movie. It was a reboot. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool if they can continue it. And then, you know, maybe another 30 years and another one will get made. So uh, I'm not against it. It's it's an interesting story. Uh, there's a, a couple other ones that we should definitely David, talk about. David Yates, you know, he's from the UK. He's got yeah. a big theater background. He's yeah. a great director. I mean, he's, he's good. No, great with I, actors I, and everything. You you, tell you're, you're not going to get a lot of complaints from people when you say David Yates doing it. If you say yeah. Stephen Sommers doing it, people are going to go, oh, come <laughs> oh, on. Uh, why? Why does Scarface need a fucking CGI machine gun? Well, and they were saying that it's supposed to be kind of like the reboot is American Dream and like the bad, the good guy with his compass pointing in the wrong direction, which I'm kind of like, okay, if you can tell a good story and make you feel connected to someone that's a despicable character in all other circumstances, which I think he can do. Right. I I just don't want to see Scarface be a good guy because he's not. He's never but been that's a good the thing. The it's when you're watching one of those movies and you know that everything that character is doing is terrible, but you, like but you still care about them like and it, want them it's to. It's the Tony Soprano syndrome. Yeah. You got yeah. You got And even like with Ray well, Donovan like Dexter now. Dexter, too. Yeah, Dexter, Ray yeah. Donovan. It's like you, you need someone that can pull it off. You need the actor that can pull it off as well. Who's right. that guy? What, and what? Who's the actor? They haven't said yet. No, I know, but who do you think? Oh, shit. Who, Who's that guy who that can could, pull off? 
I, look, and, do you, I, and do you guys know what the 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 concept is? It's going to be Mexican cartel. Oh, is that is that's, that what it said? That's what it was. Oh, the yeah. one that I read said that they didn't really know you. They were going to go to modern pick. spin. Yeah. Oscar, Oscar Isaacs. No, who's Oscar Isaacs? Which one's he's, he in? He's in the new Coen Brothers movie that's coming out this fall. Okay, mm-hmm. he's evidently going to get well, like win the Academy Award. He's supposed to be amazing, and he was he's been in a bunch of stuff. I mean, look, I, I mean, again, I don't know what what route they're going to go with it, and if that's the case, and maybe my pick. Yeah, I'm, work, re- I'm reading would, actually an article okay. from. Uh, to December oh, 2012. Right, I would say Michael B. Jordan for everything right now. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what about giving Luis Guzman a chance here? Yeah, and if it's the Mexican cartel, <laughs> let's the lead really guy? do. No, no yeah. come on. Oh, come Luis on. Do you Guzman? Think... Oh, I think. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious. We, we know. We know that Makuga drafted him. All right. So Michael let's. Pena. We got to get through a couple of these stories here real quick. Um, that would be a good one, actually. Yeah. Now, Tiffany, this is a story that I read today that wasn't on Ken's news, and I want to see how you feel about oh, it. Geez. So, no, no, Frank Miller, obviously. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, is now apparently didn't know about the announcement at Comic Con. Yeah. Well, they're also go finish. Yeah, so they, they didn't. In. They said he didn't know about the announcement with Batman and Superman that they made at Comic Con. He was as surprised as everyone else. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying that he and Zack Snyder are working closely together. And Frank Miller hasn't been involved in shit, right. and because he hasn't liked anything. Because right. yeah. remember when you and I worked on V for Vendetta, he yeah. didn't want anything to do with that either. So it's like so. How do we feel that he wants to be in this? I mean, I feel like involved in this. I feel like they're saying that they're meeting, which could be anything. Yeah, like he's not saying he's involved in the movie. It could be like, oh, he texted him, was like, hey, let's meet for coffee and chat. Right. See, that's what um, I heard. It was yeah. they're meeting for a lunch. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Zack so, Snyder's going to pick his brain. And the good, the good thing about it is that I think that Frank Miller, obviously three hundred, and Zack Snyder, mm-hmm. so he sees that he can do a good job with his property. So I think that having him meet is a good sign. Right. Yeah. He's taking think, the meeting. Yeah. I but, mean. I think that having Frank Miller involved would be good because I feel like sometimes I don't love everything that Zack Snyder does. I don't, I don't think, think you need to. You don't think you need to hide away from the mic. <laughs> and, and, you know what I just heard? Like uh, walking up here was that there, they might a be a homeless looking, guy fart. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. and that was awful. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, but no, that they're actually looking at for like a, maybe an older Batman. To, to kind I of like co sign with that, the, the Dark Knight Returns. I like that because in the story, that's what the story was. And the, yeah. it's the quote that they read at Comic-Con was mm-hmm. the fact that they had fought before. And, and people, a lot of people were screaming out in the beginning when they were talking about casting. They were talking about John Hamm or uh, I like Carl Urban. I think Carl Urban would be great. He would be great. I'd be a good Batman. So I, yeah. I, like, I have a hard time doing. He can do this voice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he was dread. Yeah. Making that yeah. I don't like it when actors do multiple comic book character So roles. do you not like Chris I Evans as Captain America? I, well, I mean, Fantastic Four was... So yeah, but he still did I'm multiple I'm glad roles. that he's come in, but I don't... But I think Dread is awesome. Like, they're already talking about that's possibly getting another no, one. No, no, trying. no, no, no. They're trying They're to. trying. Look, there, I, there's, I, a I so. there's a petition to, to, yeah. to sign. Now, so I feel before, like if there's wait, an actor Dredd who... Wait, Dread was awesome? I didn't I, see it. Yeah, I love yeah, Dread. Really, yeah. Ellis, really Ellis hated it. I actually think you would really like it. Really? It's, yeah, it's just... The style was really cool, and I was expecting it to be a fucking shitbox on wheels, and it wasn't. It just looked like a shitbox. It wasn't, man. It was It was really cool. It reminded yeah. me of like a 1989 action movie with today's special effects. Yeah, like it was it's a good description. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it just, it just, it just felt. It I'm just trying to figure out if that's a good thing. It is because you just remember that feeling you felt when you watched like Bloodsport or like not. Yeah. It, it, it's it's bigger than Bloodsport, obviously, but but just that feeling that you had, like oh, I just watched this something. Kicks ass. This kicks yeah. ass. Right. That's that. That's what I felt about Dread, and that's, I really I loved it. Ellis hated it, but I loved it. But um. Yeah, that's Ellis. Yeah, uh, I'm still on the fence with this whole Batman Superman thing because there's and it's also come out now that it's it's definitely a Superman movie. But Batman's and Batman be, is yeah, like it's, a co-star. We're going like, to have about what? seven thousand conversations about about this one. We have we have a, two more uh, one more story I want to get into before we get into so, this episode seven um, drama that's going on in the Schmozo podcast. But before we do that, guys, I'm giving away a ripped apparel T-shirt for free tonight to Schmobel. So what you guys to do everything from now on that you tweet. Make sure you hashtag it, Schmoes No Podcast. And at the end of the night, we were going to pick one of you guys, just one of the tweets from all throughout the night, and give you guys a free rip shirt. So make sure you're tweeting tonight at Schmoes No, hashtag it at Schmoes No Podcast. All right, so they announced three Avatar sequels today. Three of them, back to back to back. Is that fucking crazy, Naveed? As an executive, as an executive now, when they tell you the studio says, we're going to shoot three of these things, what do you do? I honestly think did Fox's stock dip the past couple of weeks, and they just made this announcement to like boost the stock back. Really? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm doing a movie with Sam mm-hmm. and Worthington, and I know this has been in the works for a while. It was supposed to start in the spring. It got pushed. The first one was. I, I mean, they don't really have a script yet for the first one. All we know is it's underwater, yeah. possibly. Yeah. <laughs> the whole movie, really? Yeah. 
That's what I. All heard. three. Well, no, 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 I don't no, know the one. first one. Like, yeah, the, like the Gungans? Hunga bunga. <laughs> 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 you should think this is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and, and I, I mean, they don't have a script for the first one, and Cameron's notorious for just taking his time and doing things when he's ready. Uh-huh. That, it, it, maybe three movies, but over so Cameron the next will be Cameron will be years. pretty much like Walt Disney directing it dead. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So he'd be laying the ice. Was, there was some quote from him saying that like he doesn't want to direct or produce anyone else's content. He's just in the Avatar business. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh-huh. That's all he wants to work on right now. Which makes sense. I mean, look, he didn't make movies for years, and, and then he's doing yeah. this. So and this is, for he, me, it goes back to like one of my favorites when they did all three Lord of the Rings at one time, where you're like, okay, at least. Maybe he needs a proven little bit material, of input, though. But, at but least, there's proven material. But bothering. here's the thing: it, it's not going to play into what everyone says about it. Like he's not going to keep trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger right. than the last one because people like have time to discuss it. Right. You know, I feel like doing all three at once. Yeah, it could be. It could either be the biggest success ever or like the biggest stinker. Or, fo- or, or fo- Fox no longer exists. Can we just not <laughs> name anything unobtainium? Um, like right. you've got some time to create <laughs> yeah. good names for things. <laughs> Uh, well t- done. Good t- point. T- tons and tons of great uh, stories out there this week, and there's a lot that Kenny mentioned that we couldn't get to Flash. because I know we can't get to that though because this is this is this is big. Flash. So Flash they're TV doing a Flash show, TV CW. show. So Naveed, are you familiar with what we're doing here with the Star Wars fantasy draft? Mm. All right, so we're doing we're doing it. We did a couple of months ago. We started. He knows everyone, but he doesn't know about our. Star he Wars will. Draft. He will, and he'll, he'll like it. So episode seven, obviously. One oh, of the you biggest guys are, picked who's going to be in it. It's right? like yeah, a fantasy, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a fantasy yeah, draft. Yeah. So, and the loser, the winner, uh, the losers, the losers have to take the winner to any restaurant of their choice. So D three D twenty three is coming up the Disney Expo. Mm-hmm. They're gonna announce somebody. So somebody, Mark Riley actually just got a point. John Williams, which Ken just announced, uh, he, he's on Riley's team. Uh, so I'm Riley on is on. Yeah, you're on the board. You only need two more now. Mm-hmm. So this week they're going to announce um, they're going to announce at least some. I'm thinking they're going to announce one of the big three for sure. What now do you here, think of the title though. Maybe they'll announce the title. Maybe the title as well. Now, now here, yeah. now here's here's what I need Schmoville to help us decide, and what everybody in the room is going to decide. Shoesy Pants, aka Joe Ruggiero, is no longer in the draft. He he has a full team. The team is mm-hmm. is up for grabs at this point. Um, it is, there's just, it, it, we, we spoke and it's just at this time, it, he just doesn't think he can be part of the draft. That's fine. We're letting him go out of the draft. And so we had a discussion on the way here. We said, okay, now here's what we do. We either throughout the night, pick parts of his team and place them on everyone else's team, or we give the team to Bobby Finstock. Now, uh, <laughs> that means I actually have to spend time around him. If, if, Which yeah, I tell you, he's just dinner. started showing up places. That's what he does. Um, so he showed up in New York when I was there last time. I'm not kidding you. So someone tweeted me a photo, and I was yeah, like, "That's well, just so, no." Yeah, and so Bobby Finstock and I and Johnny just get the music ready eventually because you know eventually he's going to call in. Um, so Bobby Finstock, we're thinking. So I want to go around the board here. First, let's start with our guest, Naveed. Do you think we should split the team up or give it to Finstock? I'm looking at Tiff. I yeah. know. What do, you, what, 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 what do you think? I vote for Finstock. Okay. T- Why would you do that right, to just, me? Because okay. the drama that you guys have is uh, awesome. Mark, Mark, oh. Mark, let's get Mark Riley's take on this. Mark Riley, who's on the board, one point. What, what do you got? Uh, divide the team up. I don't think uh, now, Finstock should get uh, like just a, a free a free go at this. Okay, Wait, now here, here's have, why. Can I vote, put my name in that? Uh, it, it's you're not you it, uh, you're not involved. Not now, now, now the thing is, the thing is the only reason I think you're saying this because you have a point and you know no. you get you have a very good chance of getting Mark Hamill if we divide the team and you're going to close I, the deal. Well, how good of a chance do I have? I think not Mark really. Hamill. Mark, What's that? I mean, if, if, we're, if we're picking out of a hat, we're right. talking well, odds so here. This is why, so. by the way, Schmoville, as we're doing this, I want you guys to, again, who should Bob Finstock get it or split it up? And remember, at Schmo's No Podcast, we got to have all Schmoville's opinions, too, as we're going around. Tiffany. What? Oh, what, do we, what do we what do we do? What do we do? I think we should split them up. I don't want to be in a room right, with Finstock so for any two more votes, time than I need two, to. Two for one. JTI, stick your face in Naveed's mug. What do, what do you got? I respect Finstock, but I'm going to say split it up. Split it up? You changed. I, I want that Mark Hamill. Wow. Splitting it up. All right. Yeah, uh, you do. Wild man Josh McCuga, what part of the mega powers? I, uh... <laughs> I, I appreciate Naveed's uh, plea for, but if he's in there, we're gonna have to go to like French Laundry and take a private jet there. Uh, <laughs> and I and I enjoy Finstock as we all do. Okay, but he's walking into a guy that did more research on the Star Wars draft than anybody. What mm. I think? No, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just shocked. I'm just here. Uh, I think 
<laughs> for the awkwardness of the dinner. <laughs> Say, yes. We go with Vince. Yeah! Oh! You know the mega power. Yes. You knew he wasn't going to turn it's all on. all about the awkwardness now, of the dinner. Now we know, we know where this next vote is going to go. It's, it's, it's Finstock's Ken. rival, Ken Knapsack. Look, Ken. look, look. Do look we, me in the eye. I can't. Look uh, me in the do eye. We, um, we're 100% certain we're going with this route, right? We're going Joe, with this route. Joe, Joe's Joe, out. Joe's okay. out. That's a controversial decision in and of we itself. We've already talked. Yeah. Joe, Joe's um, aware of this. Joe's um, aware of this. We know. We're but as a producer of... An entertainment-based program. I hate you. You would not so want to have right Mark so Ellis hard. trying sushi for the first time without Finstock there. Finstock. Yes. Okay. Uh, competitively, uh, if we're going to take this draft realistically, that's yeah. really an unfair advantage because Shusi had a good draft. Um, All right. Uh, or how about because you so, care so, about me and my life? Uh, nice try. And my so, emotional so, so, status. So, no. so right, right now, <laughs> right now, Finstock, no. Finstock is in the lead. I have not cast my vote yet. Johnny Ice. I mean, if this was like an NFL draft yeah. and somebody just gave up yeah. like right afterwards, that team would just sit there. So I got to go Finstock on this one. To Whoa, take it. Finstock. Okay. Or, or nobody at all. Or well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So, all right. So Finstock and the fans right now are saying Finstock. Finstock. Here's the thing, Finstock. though. If he yeah, gets to Finstock. have the team, I feel like there should be some penalty for him. Because he's the IRS is breathing down uh -oh. my neck like it's some kind of personal uh -oh. vendetta against Bobby Finstock. I swear, if he shows up, it's Bobby Finstock. No, it's Bobby Finstock. You see me look no. over my shoulder? It's Bobby Finstock. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Uh, wait, wait, no. Wait, wait let's, turn, let's, let's, let's turn it down. Is anybody there? Dickery, dickery, doc. Mm. <laughs> it's Bob Finstock. Somebody cancel the rest of uh, Shoozy Pants' Star Wars draft. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like the brand new owner of a Star Wars fantasy draft, Mr. Bob Finstock, is on the phone. Bobby, congratulations! You just picked up a team of uh, you just had you just picked Sorry, inherited Div. you inherited an inherited. entire team. Worst. You have a team now. Now this week at D twenty three, you have a good chance of picking up Mark Hamill is on your team. You I, a, I think we should pull what? Mark Hamill from I, his team. Uh, I feel Listen, like we should each get to take one person. That, he that's exactly. Exactly. This was so this is what the vote was about. But you guys I, lost. Right before he called in, you, I said there should be some penalty because I, he didn't go through you, two long nights you, of drafting you guys people. Exactly. Look, my, look, exactly. Your dog farting on us. Exactly. Little, little do people know is I was actually, you know, he was just a pup, a marionette pup at Shoozy Pants. I had to stay. This was all my, 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 uh, you know, studying obviously. Of course. Nothing so you're, say, you're saying you're saying you're saying from the get go you're saying that he was always, he was like your Brian Cashman and you were George Steinbrenner. Pretty much. I mean, look, he went against the grain and picked Dakota Fanning. I mean, she was in Little Miss Sunshine. There's no way that like she could be in Star Wars. Well, you never you know? know. You never know. You never know what's going to happen there. But because to go to Fanning also worked with J.J. Abrams, so that's not necessarily true. It was a good point. It was a good pick. So obviously, Shuji Pants knows his team better than you do, so that doesn't matter. Um, so <laughs> you are going to, yeah, this is a very good point here. T.J. Ackwood says, Tiffany Tweeds, your argument is invalid. <gasps> uh, at Graham Harwell, Finstock Correct. in the house. Uh, wow. At Myers, FTW, no. when will Tiffany Tweeds just admit she's in love with Bobby Finstock? Um, <laughs> at Joey, at Joey <laughs> Beans. I kissed his face once, and I don't feel any different. About At it. Joey Beans eighty one Finstock bitch, not not to you, <laughs> Tiffany, just in general. Um, well, I got a, I got a really, I mean, I got a really good team. Wilk, Tom Wilkinson, the guys in everything. Yeah. You know James Remar. I was with him last night. We had coffee. That's not true. Where were um, you? Where were you last night? We. Uh, I was shirtless on my couch eating a bowl of Captain okay, Crunch. That's what I thought. Okay, so so go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Mark Mark Hamill obviously is going to be in Star Wars. I mean, him not being in Star Wars is like. Tiffany not calling me up later tonight. Obviously, it's going to happen. Okay, uh, makes sense. Okay, so Bobby, listen, congratulations. So now you are now. Now, what's going to happen if you win? Where are we going to go to dinner? Who is? What's the place from Felicity? We're going to go to a place where uh, you know someone probably has never ate something before. Oh. Put, it, put it that way. It's going to oh. be pretty interesting. All right, so someone has never. Tiffany, I'm not. Uh, I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay. I just feel really uncomfortable and, like, grossed out. As you should. Okay. Well, Finstock, congratulations. Uh, we're going to see you probably sooner than later, but you have yourself a team. Uh, we'll let you know what happens to D23, and we'll send you the rest. I don't know if we if we don't. He's got more people on his team. If we get those people, we'll send them to you. If not, you got what you got. So, uh, congrats. super excited. All right. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. See you later, Tiffany. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Bobby's been stuck out. Okay, so guys, that's it. That's what we had. And uh, I, I told wow. some people that I'd be talking about the Walter, Walter Mitty tra- trailer and my thoughts on that. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, so we're going to go to break here. When we get back, we're going to take a phone call from Lucas Till, talk to him about his brand new movie, Paranoia, talk to him about X-Men, X-Men First Class, X-Men Days of Future Past. Very excited. Schmoes No Podcast, Naveed Makalarji, Tiffany Smith, rest of the Schmoes No crew, Schmoes No Podcast. How about that? Who can? Who doesn't know what this song is? Oh man, this is sad. Sad sax I have with me here. I know Johnny knows it because he can see it. <laughs> Wait, let, let, just let it play a little bit because I love that. Schmuggles already guessing right now. I guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, here they comes. Hold on. Uh, yep, they all got it. Schmuggles already got it. Really? X Men First Class. And oh, think about it, guys. Yeah, Come on, yeah. we got we got. I a, just one watched the, it today. Yeah, we, it, so I'm glad that you picked it up. Um, I'm not good at this. You know this about me. I know. Uh, guys, it's the Schmoes No Podcast. We're joined here by our good buddy, Naveed Makalarji, uh, Tiffany Smith. Mark Ellis is out of town this weekend, and we're going to be joined in just a little bit by Lucas Till, who is the one of the stars of the new movie, Paranoia, which we're very excited to have him on. We're gonna, you know we're going to ask him about X-Men. Uh, Naveed, you know Lucas. Yep. How do you know Lucas? Uh, oh. Because uh. <laughs> I know everyone. <laughs> yeah. I think it started out at a general meeting, and I just really, really, he's a great guy, super nice guy. Seems like it. Yeah, yeah he seems. just kept in touch a lot. And I'll tell you what, man, like every time, and I don't want to talk about it too much before we get him on the phone, but every time that I see this kid, I'm more and more impressed mm-hmm. because he's young. He's only like 24, yeah. 25. Yeah. And we saw him in Stoker, and he was always, yeah. he, so in Stoker, he was playing like just a pure dick. And then, but when he, he's in X Men First Class, he's a dick with a heart. And then, you know, he just kind of comes into his own. And then you get this movie, Paranoia, which, again, it's a totally different spin. And I said, this kid's going to be around for a while because yeah. he's good. He's really he's good, too. So uh, excited to talk to him in a, a little good bit. Look too. Yeah, he does. So we're excited to talk to Lucas. And when he calls in, we'll. We're going to ask a whole bunch of things. So, again, make sure you guys, when we get Lucas on the phone, that you guys, again, remember to tweet in tonight, at Schmozno, and tweet in, to hashtag at Schmozno Podcast. So, at the end of the night, we're going to pick one of you guys' comments out, and we will give away a free Ripped Apparel shirt. Speaking of Ripped Apparel, if you guys don't know what it is, Tiffany Smith loves Ripped Apparel. I can't tell you how many times for a stack she texts me. <laughs> you and have says, to laugh while you're saying, it's Tiffany you love Smith it. loves you, you, Ripped Apparel. You love, I do. You love, you love, you love it. Uh, and I get really excited to text Christian when I see t-shirts I want. Yeah. So, and and why not? Because you get all these great shirts that she wears on Stacked, and we wear a lot. I wore this one, this Godzilla one, which was a mixture of Godzilla meets uh, Game of Thrones, which is really cool. They do, and Mark Riley right now is wearing one, a Scoundrel Dogs, Reservoir this, Dogs this meets is Star an Wars. This awesome yeah. one. So, um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, again, it's, it's if you have not gone to RipTheParrel.com, do it. Just go to the Toad Hop Network link right there. Go underneath. Check it out. And you guys, all you do is you tap, right now it's SK Elysium. The code keeps changing. We're working on, we're trying to find a new system that works a little bit better than this. I know it's a little crazy. But without any further ado, uh, we got, we promised you our guest, and our guest is now calling in. Again, he's the star of, one of the stars of the brand new film, Paranoia. He is Havoc from the, uh, the X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past. We welcome Lucas Till to the show. Lucas, what's up, man? Hey, how you guys doing? What's All going right. on, dude? Uh, now, Lucas, I don't know if you've uh, if you remember, we're here with uh, Naveed Makalarji. What's up, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? I was emailing him last night. So yeah, I was here. Oh, yeah. Cool. He emailed me saying he was going to be there, and uh, and I was like, uh, where? I, I he had know. no idea what I was like, talking about. No, that's hysterical. <laughs> that's hysterical. Uh, well, Lucas, You're like at your house, outside <laughs> the window. Yeah. Our fans are very excited to have you on the show, man. For uh, for a lot of different reasons, um, and we're going to talk to you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you first of all is that it just just to give uh, everybody an intro who may not with our fan base, everyone's pretty much familiar with you. But it, it, in case they're not, how did you get started in this whole acting racket? Porn. Porn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you are like, too yeah. young for that. <laughs> I was like, like Joe, yeah. like what were you like, Joey from Friends? Were you an extra? Or you were getting in the dirty deeds. He's a fluffer. And, uh, I, I I wish you know, I feel like some of the late greats have uh, definitely started in pornography, but I did not. I started doing commercials when I was a kid, uh, but in seriousness, I yeah. was about ten when I started. Uh, 
just doing some modeling stuff as a kid and, and getting doing commercials and stuff like that. And I think I did my first movie when I was eleven. Wow! And you're from you're uh, from you're from Texas. I was born there, but don't want that fully. I only lived there like three months. Okay, and then we moved to Georgia. Was where I grew up most of my life. Okay, so you were you were in Georgia, and then so you and what? How old were you when you moved out to Los Angeles? Was that after you got your first movie? No, that was. Uh, let's see, I was. I just turned eighteen. I just graduated high school when I moved to LA. Oh, great. Okay, cool. So then, so what? What was the first thing that you ever got? First, <laughs> the first thing I ever got. You were. You guys ever remember well, a movie or, or yeah. just professional job otherwise? Uh, I mean, what's what's the more fun story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, let's see. I think... Uh, well, I, super yeah, first movie I got, I played this... Uh, it was a really small... I think it was like a million-dollar movie we shot in Atlanta. Um, and, and I played the kid at the watering hole. It was set in like the early 1900s, and I... Uh, and I come and I'm like, no girls allowed. Something like that. The main character or something. So my, that's what Mark Ellis yeah. says every time someone walks into the studio. It's the truth. Um, <laughs> he says it to me every yeah. time. It's the truth. Uh, okay, so Lucas, now I want to get I want to get into paranoia here because uh, Mark and I just saw it a couple of days ago. And here, here's the thing, though, honestly, again, it, whether you were in the studio on the phone or not even here, and I said this in the feed before he called in. This was the movie that I watched you and I said this kid's going to be around for a while because you. No, really? I'm serious. No, uh, you, I mean, thanks, thanks, no, thanks. no, no. Seriously, here, here, here's why. But here's why I said that because when I saw Stoker, you played like just a pure dick. When, when in in, yeah. in X Men First Class, you were a dick with a heart. Uh, and, then, and, but, and in this movie, you're like the. You know the 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 geeky kind of uh, hipster tech guy that's just a good dude, and you didn't, <laughs> yeah, you didn't, but you didn't play. You weren't like you weren't jerky at all, and you just, you, I, I wouldn't even recognize you if I didn't know you were in the movie. And I was like, wow, dude, I like hearing that. I it, like hearing that. It's the truth, man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you totally the truth because I was watching, and I knew you were going to be on the show, so I wanted to obviously pay attention to everything that was going on and see what the character was all about. And so, what was your preparation going into this role? Now, being like, you know, the you were the tech guy, but like the nerdy hipster tech guy. Right. Yeah. I think you know it was simple as looking up anything on my phone that I didn't know any of the, any of the jargon, which I did know. I don't. I don't. I actually uh, shame to admit, but I've been kind of busy recently. And I haven't had time to actually see the movie, so I don't know what actually made it in. Oh, okay. But I remember there was, there was a lot of jargon that was like way over my head, but I just made sure I learned it. I just looked it up on my phone, see if it made sense, and then. Uh, and then, uh, and I, I remember kind of preparation was pretty easy as far as, you know, when I showed up, I had no idea what a Brooklyn kid, hipster tech guy from, from Brooklyn, like I said, right. repeating myself. I had a few beers, sorry. That's right. Um, <laughs> well, you, you, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you would have had a lot and more I'm, if you were here, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah, oh, good, good. I like to hear that. So anyways, I, I, I kind of just said whatever, I remember when I met Robert, uh, for the role, I said, you know, kind of whatever Liam does, I just want to contrast that. Yeah. So if he's a big stud leading man, I just want to be a total geek, loser with those high water pants and those really high socks and um, and that B. Arthur haircut. Oh, so the, the haircut was out of control. It was great. It's like the, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it did. It looked like a it, it looked like a Florida like house mom or something. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that was. I'm not even lying though. It was a point. Because I had, they had to keep there was a hiatus right for like three months, and I yeah. had to keep that haircut for another movie, and I was devastated. I was like, God, come on, please. Uh, so, uh, and then, go ahead, go ahead. And we had a, yeah, we went when we came back. I, I was like, I was just so mad. I was like, all right, let's let's just make a joke out of this. So I was like, who do I look like? That's it. And I got a picture of the late great B. Arthur from Golden Girls. <laughs> wait, so you actually, you actually, wait, you actually modeled, time. you actually modeled your look after B. Arthur. Well, I don't think we modeled it. It just ended up that way. That is so, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> sitting in the makeup chair, like, what am I going to do, you know? Oh, I love that. It. I love it. So, all right, so you work working with Liam now. Is that the first time you guys had met? Did you guys know each other beforehand? Because uh, I know you worked with Miley at one point. I don't know if that you guys, like, met th yeah. through that circuit. Like, how? No, sorry. I don't think it, no, no, I, I hadn't. The first time I met him was, was when we did the camera test for the movie. Oh, okay. But he's a, he's a super nice dude. I don't know if you know many Australians, but they're all pretty much uh, kind of hard to dislike 
Yeah, it's true. We have a lot of Australian callers, and they're always like the nicest people that call in. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. They drink I, a lot of beer. I know yeah. your game plan, though, man. You're working with Jennifer Lawrence, and you're working with Liam. You're trying to get into the Hunger Games, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind that money that they make, but uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? I'd rather. I'd rather be in a remake of Battle Royale, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Gunshots. Gunshots. Um, all right, so you're work, working with Liam. You guys, obviously, so you guys play best friends in the movie. Um, and it, it gave me a little bit of a, like a, the Boiler Room movie. Remember, it gave me that kind of feeling a little bit, too, when I, when I saw it meets, like, I don't want to date myself here, but the net with uh, Sandra Bullock had that kind of feel to it too when the technology was relevant back then. But so how did oh right yeah how did you and Liam uh, get along like in and like preparation to like, hanging out and being friends? How'd that all go down? Yeah, it's funny. I, people have been asking me this question all day, and I've been like, yeah, we uh, well, no, I think about it. we really didn't hang out that much. But it wasn't it wasn't because we disliked each other. I mean, he's kind of just. He's kind of, he's he's a dude. I'm a dude, and we yeah. would kind of. We, there was enough said, you know. We we got it. We showed up to work. And that was we, it. He was a funny guy, and I'd laugh at his jokes. He'd laugh at my quips every now and then. <laughs> and right. We move on, and we go home. And, That's... But he was an easy guy to get along with. So uh, I, I guess it just worked well, you know. It did. It played well, and you guys. I bought. I bought that you guys knew each other for a while. So, uh, and I'm sure another question you'd be getting a million times. Now I know that you have. Uh, you, have you only have like one scene with Oldman. I, I don't think you. You don't have any with right. Ford, right? No. Yeah, that's a joke because I. People are like, dude, you're in a movie with Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Even though know, <laughs> I'm in a scene with Gary and I don't say anything. And I do say something to Harrison, but I don't act, I'm not actually in a scene with him. So. Were, you, so, were, you, when right. you, were you standing there the whole time in that scene? Because the way that the scene is set up, like Liam, Liam goes in there and they're pitching the whole thing. And so Lucas and his buddies are all standing uh, around as Liam pitches them mm -hmm. this big thing. And, and Oldman is the boss. Were you looking at Oldman the whole time going, holy shit, that's Dracula? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was more like uh you ever see that movie Tiptoes? Oh my Matthew god, Mane? yes, the midgets that was amazing. <laughs> that movie is <laughs> yeah. awesome, Matthew That's McConaughey. What I was thinking. You're That's the what best, I was man. Oh, and just because of that, if you do not come live get in here live in studio so we could cheers on a beer on that one, the guy brings up tiptoes yeah. for Gar <laughs> Harold. You're amazing. Oh man, no, I know. Good I mean I'm high fiving myself. Right <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yes. All right. So, so you do. You do. You, you get to meet. I mean, did you meet Tiptoes when you were there? At least, or do you do you say hello to him? Like, what? yeah. No, I. Uh, I. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he's a really sweet guy. I met everyone actually. That's cool. Uh, Gary Oldman yeah. is obviously he's a classic guy. So that that's really and I'm like I said, I, don't be you're going to be working with him again, dude. You really uh, it, you really shine in that one for sure in the in the movie. And happy to see that that movie's working out. It opens up not this Friday, but the next, I believe. Uh, what is it? Well, yeah, like sixteenth or twelfth. He hasn't it seen it. He no, it is. No, it is. No, I know it is. I have the date. I have the date here. It's August. Six, it's August sixteenth. Uh, with guys, one drunk actor. And that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> tried to. Promote a movie. Well, let's let's talk let's talk about the movie that all of our fans want to know it, and it has to do with the past. And we're talking about the Miley Cyrus movie. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Christian didn't watch that one. No, I did not see that. But Tiff, <laughs> Tiffany, you actually have a question first. So you happen to be on one of my favorite TV shows, House. What was that experience uh, like for oh, you? Oh yeah. You're like I was. Yeah, yeah I, I mean was. that was that was pretty rad. That was let's see, that was the first job I ever booked when I moved to LA. Really. Yeah, wow. I uh, I came in. <laughs> I really really set my set a high bar. I think I booked two jobs in the same day within two weeks of moving to LA, right? Mm -hmm. And and everyone's like, no, nah, no, nah, no way. I'm like, well, you know, I guess this is gonna be the way it's gonna be. <laughs> and I booked another job, and then and I and then the next year I was unemployed for like eight months. I didn't know what to do, but I remember setting a standard with that one, um, and I kind of. It was awesome, you know. I, I got to be on it because I, I love the show too. I'd watched pretty much every season up to that point, and then I got to be on it. And um, and I think I get a girl pregnant on the show. Isn't that what I did? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You were the one who yeah, did it. That's, so. that, that, no, no, he's in character yeah. right now. He's in character. He doesn't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sounds a lot like me, dude. Good work. 
Uh, who was that? <laughs> that was that McCuga? It was yeah. Josh McCuga. Yeah. Uh, the wild man pops in there. So, okay, so you did you did house, and then, again, our fans would probably uh, would come in here and start shooting us with arrows if we did not ask you about how X-Men First Class all went down. And let me tell you this also, too, and you can go and you check out our review on this, too, so you know I'm not bullshitting. X-Men First Class is actually just a step above X2 for me. It's my favorite X-Men movie. Oh wow! Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just for me, what I, what I loved about X Men First Class was the way that Matthew Vaughn handled the characters, and uh, I yeah. love. To me, I got the Anakin Obi Wan story that I wanted in Star Wars. I got that in yes. X Men. Right, right. Uh, it was. Yeah. It's, it just everything that I needed for for that storyline. I understood the anger behind Magneto, and I got it all. And then I saw the way you guys yeah. were all recruited, and it just really worked. So, can you take me through that process of? He- I mean, first of all, were you an X Men fan beforehand when you got? Cast, like, oh, just take me through that process. Boy, was I. I was probably the most irritating kid on set, man. Like, <laughs> guys, guys, we're next man. Bro, oh, dude, we're next man. Yo, check it out. That's, 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 we're next man. That's awesome. And every, every chance I got, you know, was, uh, I was a huge fan before. And then now I think I'm twice the fan I was before. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like, I don't know. I, I still kind of can't believe that I'm not, I'm not even, and I'm not even like, you know, some character that was a little more obscure. I'm, I'm the brother of Cyclops. You know, I'm, I'm playing something that I have known since I was a kid. Right. And that that that, should, that realization of, of of your dream, I guess, mm-hmm. really, is uh, one of the coolest things you could ever do. So now I'm kind of like, now I'm going to retire, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, and drink beer and do more interviews with uh, co- uh, with uh, hosts of. Uh, radio shows while they're drinking beer. That's know? right. Just get shit faced, throw a bottle against the world, and say, I'm Havoc, bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you, it's like you've hung out with me before. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, now, now, how about, so now, you know, obviously Brian Singer's taken over this new movie, now, and he had done so much for the original franchise. And then, so Matthew Vaughn, though, really, I mean, just did so much. Uh, to me, I just think he reinvented and rejuvenated the whole franchise, honestly. Now, how was it when you met with Matthew? What was he like as a director? Director and what was it like working with him? <laughs> um, I, you know, it was pretty rad. Um, and and in the beginning, when I went to go screen test, I was in a real weird place. I was shooting my own movie that I was producing at the time. It was my own money, and I was losing money because I had to go <laughs> leave to go screen test for this other superhero movie, yeah. which was excellent, obviously. And and I remember showing up for the audition and. Uh, it is a podcast, so I can I swear on this or uh, yeah. fuck, okay. fuck, fuck, fuck no, yeah. fuck no. <laughs> yeah, you can curse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so good. But I just remember I went in. I'm nervous as hell. And I go in and and, and there's a, a room full of people. And Matthew comes up and I do the the first scene. And he's like, "Um, what the fuck was that? What the fuck are these sides?" What oh the my fuck God. are these? And I was like, what? He's like, no, 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 you, you were great. You were fine. Uh, well, what, what are these sides he's reading? What is shit? And I was like, who's he? Yeah. So then uh, we kind of moved on. Yeah. And then I ended up getting the part later. I mean, long story short. And then working for him was like, it was kind of frustrating at first because I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be silent. I'm going to hit my mark. I'm going to say my lines. I'm going to put some sprinkled charisma on him and hopefully go home and yeah. take a paycheck and say call a day. Yeah. And then, but, you know, he he had a good sense of humor that I didn't really get because I was too a little too square at the time because uh-huh. I was on the earth. And it would frustrate me because he'd be like, hey, blonde kid in the back, why don't you move to the left? <laughs> so, but after I got used to it, yeah, it was kind of a joy. And he was, uh, he's, I mean, he's got a, he's a guy with a vision and he knows what he's doing, you know, obviously. Yes. Wait, can There's we so hear, much style in that movie. Can, what were the sides that you were doing? Did that end up in the movie? No, they were, <laughs> okay, because they had generic sides for everybody. And I'm sure you can ask about half of the young guys in Hollywood, they all had the same story. Uh, there was a role called Halper that they called it, which was basically Banshee, but it was a mix, and it was just someone talking to a character like Magneto. Right. And then you had to actually scream in the audition, and uh, <laughs> like you were, wow. blow, you know, blowing everybody's ears out. I remember that actually. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, now, so all right, so when you're on, you're on set then, and you know. First of all, how do you, when you're filming this movie and you have Matthew Vaughn, you see his vision. Do you know that this thing is gonna? Be a success because the third one and, and Origins wasn't really weren't really received after well. After Origins, let's be honest, you could have been a little bit nervous. Yeah, about after, this movie yeah, exactly. Out. After Wolverine <laughs> Origins, you guys were like, "Ah, oh, shit." Let's hope this guy gets it right. I mean, is there a lot of that feeling on the set? 
Oh, <laughs> mm, I don't know. No, I, I think, no, dude, because it's like he he began it. He's hungry for it now. Yeah. And are you talking about singing? No, 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 no. I'm talking about still. I'm still talking about Vaughn. When Vaughn, when Vaughn was doing X Men, uh, first class, like because that was right after Origins, and Origins was not really received well. And so it's like this is the it, you know had first class not been received well, it's you know Kiss X Men, X Men goes Batman and Robin style. If if that doesn't, oh yeah, if, if that right. Received well. I know, I know. So, so when you're Franchise on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when you're on set, like what's what's the what's the feeling like when you guys are kind of knowing that, especially you as an X Men fan. Yeah, right. Well, I think at that point, it was so many young. New, I mean, Jennifer hadn't even been nominated for Winner's Bone yet. Right. Wow. Nick oh, really? Was wow. Established, but wow. but super nice guy. I mean, we were all just so excited. I mean, Fassbender and McAvoy included. They were they were just like, wow, this is this is awesome, you know. So I don't think we were even too concerned with how it was. I mean, we were. It was you know, in a movie that big, it never seems like anything's going right. I was in Winnipeg. Before this day's future pass, I was at 17 pages I did in one day with Josh Dumel, and I fly the next day into Montreal, and we're averaging a half a page a day. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, oh this is gosh. a big movie. We're supposed to be doing faster, right? No, not the case. So you, it is so mind numbing, like the process, and you, you watch it and, it, and it frustrates you, and then it comes out fine, and you're like, how did that happen? It's like magic. I don't even know. So I think we were all a little worried <laughs> that it may not go the way we wanted to. But I also don't know what we're talking about, obviously, because when it came out, it was the finished product was kind of magnificent. Oh, right? so good. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's well, enough said, I guess. When they finished, rap, when you guys wrapped the shoot, you, you still had a lot of the movie left to do. That's right. Actually, there's that scene with me and Banshee where... I'm on the piece? ship, and he and he, I jump off the oh, ship, yeah, and he yeah, rescues yeah, me, and yeah. we, we're flying in the rear. By the way, those were real stuntmen under helicopters, really? actually flying. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And yeah, wow. and that was added like six months later. That was that was like four months before the movie came out. Uh, we shot that. So that's awesome. It was, uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Brian seems a lot of fun. Like a director on that. Well, so I'm sorry. Is there any when you're when you're like so obviously when you guys are talking on uh, off take you know when the, when ta- off takes offset you guys are talking about you know there's going to be more X Men movies especially if you have a good feeling about it now do you, do you, as an X Men fan do you ever think in your head that the X Men F- Days of Future Past story is going to come on? Or I, am I going to survive for the next? Yeah, am I going to survive? Am I going to make it? Like what? Oh yeah. What, like what? What did you oh, think? Yeah, big time. Well, I didn't know. I was actually working at the time when I found out that it was confirmed that I was going to be in the next one. They had already started shooting. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not in this one. And then, um, and then I got the call saying, "Yeah, uh, we're going to have to shoot in the middle of your other movie." So sorry about it, but <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "All right, well, here we go." Um, and that was, you know, was, was great, man. I got to show up. It is a, it is a pretty substantially, or you know, it's much smaller. But I don't mind. I'll, I'll make a cameo in any action movie as long as I'm in it, you know. And, and, and a lot of us didn't make it in from first class, you know. I think five of us made it in from the last one. So it was kind of an honor. Not kind of. It was an honor to be in it. And yeah, it was great, man. So are you a comic fan? You Did you grow up reading comics and stuff? You know, I did. Well, not, no. Not like, a, <laughs> not like a comic fanatic. It's not like I'd never read any, but I... But I you watch the cartoon is what you're saying. More, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I watched the animated series like Batman, Superman, uh, X Men, Spider Man. Yeah. Like yeah. The staples in my childhood. What and, was, and yeah. What, what was it like being on set when you're like, holy crap, Magneto's right here and Professor X, and you're getting to see him in this instance where he's not in the wheelchair yet? Was that like, I'm totally smiling right thing? now. I'm smiling right now. <laughs> even thinking about it. It was, it is, and will always be the coolest experience of my life that's cool that's <laughs> like awesome it was amazing as, as a nerd you know yeah no, I'm a huge comic fan, so I'm totally jealous of you. Yeah, it's dude, it's 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 really super cool too, especially because have you seen? Did you see the Comic Con footage, by the way? Dude, did I? Yeah. Oh, I dude, I was at, I was in Hall H and I saw it, and it was. Oh my god! Did they, and like Inception is one of my favorite movies, and they played the time Hans Zimmer score through, and they showed it twice, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is going to rival the Avengers! It is going to rival yeah. the Avengers!" Yeah. It is. It, it, I know. Oh, how do you feel yeah, as like, being dude, part I of this? Mean, because the Avengers does have it is the Avengers, but it's like now we're talking like twenty heavy hitting people 
well, icon, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. in, in one way or another, all in one movie. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't even know how half the budget must have been spent on just reuniting that cast. Right. Right? Seriously. And, and so, you know, here's something, you mentioned something earlier before, and I got to ask you because I know there, and there's really only one that you can answer because there were a lot, if you go through all the X-Men movies, there are some continuity issues that Brian Singer has to answer and things that you really can't answer. But one of the things yep. that you may or may not be able to answer is the subject of of Havoc and Cyclops are brothers. Now, yeah, it's weird, right? It's weird because <laughs> in the 60s, Havoc is probably close to 18, 19, and we don't see Scott until 2000, and he's already in his 20s. So that's a significant age difference. Is that going Time to travel. be? Is that Time going to be? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm wondering. Is it going to be explained? Do we get to see you and your brother at all? Can you give us any of that? <laughs> I mean, dude, I would love to, but I, I have no idea. All right. <laughs> it's such a, I wish that I knew anything. I mean, I wish that I would knew that I was in a movie about three months ago, you know? And, uh, <laughs> but, have you, so have you not and, shot, have you not shot your stuff yet? I did, yeah. No, okay. I'm all, I'm all done unless they have reshoots. So okay. I'm, I'm all finished. Uh, dude, I, I can't yeah. I can't tell you how excited we are for this movie, and, uh, and I'm going to have... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I actually one of my one of my guys wants to ask you one more question before we let you go. But I I would love to have you back in on the show, hopefully in studio before sure. before it comes out, um, to talk more extra yeah. stuff and everything that you're working on. Because honestly, and I wasn't just saying to blow smoke up your ass. I really think you, uh, you got a great career ahead of you. It was your, the movie was great, and it was really fun to watch you uh, do your stuff, man. Well, thanks, man. That means a lot. Yeah, no sweat. Jo- Josh the Wild Man Makuga is here. Wants to ask a couple questions. Uh, Lu- Lucas? Lucas Till, <laughs> big fan. Uh, they call me the Wild on Man on this show because uh, he's reason. drunk. Uh, for, they call me the Wild, yeah, they call wild, me the wild Man. Man. <laughs> I haven't seen my shoes in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that Bill Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen my shoes in three weeks. All right, quick question. Uh, you have your choice between Jean Grey and Jennifer Lawrence. Who do you take? Well... You, you said you, you didn't say Tom Jensen yeah. or Jennifer. I know. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same person. Are you talking actresses? You're giving, yeah, wait, or, no, no. Mystique or the other one? All right. So Mystique or Jean Grey. That's, that's a fair question. Gray. And yeah. Mystique Blue okay, or Mystique as Jennifer Lawrence? Right? Yeah, no. He's, yeah. Saying, no. he's saying ca- no, if, if Havoc can can sleep with either one of these, who's Havoc <laughs> taking? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. <laughs> Come on. Nah. Jean Grey scares the crap out of me. Mystique. Mystique. She can be anyone you anybody. want. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. Uh, okay, you got another one, Wild Man? Yeah, all right. Here we go. <laughs> Boy, he's thinking hard about Here this one. Go. Come on, come on. <laughs> all right, you guys invade Cuba again. Do you take the X-Men, or do you take everybody from Bad Boys 2? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, you, you know, it's the latter. Bad yeah. Boys 2. Bad Boys 2. Right. Thanks, right. Lucas. Lu- Lucas Till, uh, again, make sure you check out his upcoming movie, Paranoia, which comes out on August the 16th. We will be putting this portion of the show up on YouTube next week, so you, right before the release. Lucas, thank you so much. Also, make sure you follow Lucas on Twitter, at Lucas Till. And, Lucas, please come back and visit us in studio when you can. It would be my honor. All Lucas, right. we'll go grab a drink soon. It's not me. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. All right. Later on. Lucas, tell everybody uh, what a great interview that was. That guy is awesome. He's a cool guy. He's a cool Isn't dude, man. Cool? Yeah, that's that's the kind Jeez. of thing. That's that's when you root for dudes. Yeah. Like when yeah. you when you yeah. talk to a guy who just can just bullshit, have a couple beers, and just talk about his. Like I felt like I was talking to my buddy about his time. On I never met the guy. So yeah, he's a fantastic. Great you root for that guy. Okay, guys. So when we get back. Aaron Darling will be in studio, and we're going to be talking about all the X-Men movies. Naveed, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm You're, leaving? Yeah, I thought you said you were leaving. Are you going to have a dinner? I do, but I do you want to stick He's around. Going to meet uh, Lucas. Just for a few minutes. All right, let me I want another beer. All right, you just stick around. Okay, so Naveed will be around, but Naveed's also going to be co-hosting on August 15th when Elsa's up. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's okay, why. guys. Because so, Tiffany hasn't stood up yet. No, he's creepy. All right, so as, <laughs> as, X, as X-Men <laughs> takes us out, uh, thank you, Bobby Finstock. So we're going to have um, I heard Darling talking to X-Men movies. Tweet in, at Schmozno, hashtag it, Schmozno Podcast, get a rip shirt. Naveed McElargy, Tiffany Smith, Christian Harloff, Schmozno Podcast. All right. 
Uh, John, what happened? John, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny just gave me the, hurry up, just go, just go, just go. Uh, that's that's the engineer working for you and saying, just move, motherfucker, start and talking. Hey, it's Christian Harlow, Schmoes No Podcast, here with Tiffany Smith. Mark Ellis is out on assignment telling yuck yuck jokes somewhere else. Uh, I, I am here that. with Naveed McElargy, who has stuck around, and joining us again, back in Schmoville from Clever Movies and... Can I say? Yeah, you can say AMC it. now. Erin <laughs> Darling joins us. Erin, how are you? Yay. I'm fantastic. How are you, Christian? Good. Thank you for joining us once again. And uh, ho- glad we didn't scare you off with the celebrity dating game last time you were here. So uh, I was actually thinking about that today. I was like, is that going to happen again? Not Please tonight. Not again. Not, <laughs> Please well, that, never that, again. That, it actually will happen again. Not tonight, but it will happen again. Now, we're obviously, we just talked to Lucas Till from the uh, the X-Men movies, who was great. Um and we're gonna talk. We we talked about some of the stuff of action first class and what's gonna happen with uh, Days of Future Past. And we figured it would be great to talk about all the action movies. Before we do that, I wanted to. There were a couple. Naveed brought up before when we were at break a couple of the trailers that came out. Uh, we should talk about a few of them. I went into back and forth on Twitter with a few of the uh, f- few Schmovillians, if you will, and there. I had posted one of our one of our followers, a great member of Schmoville, Tyler Myers. Had wrote that he, because uh, I had tweeted about Walter Mitty. Mm-hmm. The trailer to me looks great. Looks amazing. I think the awesome. movie looks, looks fantastic. So mm-hmm. I was just wishing that Ben Stiller wasn't in it. Yeah. Uh, that was really? my yeah. I don't can, like Ben Stiller. And can we talk about the fact that there was already a remake with Danny Kaye, who's like one of my faves ever? Really? Yeah. No. So, but the, the, when I'm when I'm watching this movie, when I'm watching this trailer, I'm going. It reminded me of like a Eternal Sunshine vibe. Mm-hmm. I, I just it had every. Every bit of that feeling of I'm going to really enjoy it this looks movie. Beautiful. I just don't like Ben Stiller, and so the tweets were like they were coming in on my on my other on the Christian Harlow's Twitter was that hey how could you just judge it just from him? I'm, like, I'm not judging the movie. The movie looks good. I just there are certain actors you don't like, mm-hmm. and someone said, well you can't. He, just, he directed it. Too. Yeah, he yeah. directed it too. It's like you can't yeah. just give it. A, he, he's a good director. He's a good director. I would just rather him directed somebody else right. in the role because I just don't necessarily like him. I might still love the movie, but maybe would have loved it with someone else. And and someone said, well you can't just off put him just because you don't like him. I go that's not true because if Ashton Kutcher was announced as Batman, you wouldn't be going oh we got to give him a shot. You see. <laughs> Fuck this shit, and it's, it's not the same thing. But it's you know what I mean. It's what a, is it, it about him that you don't? Enjoy? I just find him annoying for some reason. Like there are certain movies I loved him, and I loved him in Royal Tannenbaums. I thought uh-huh. he, for, but I was an ensemble piece. I liked him in uh, Tropic Thunder. So Tropic what you're trying Thunder, to say yeah, is yeah. Ben Stiller is your Anne Hathaway? Well, no, you hate <laughs> oh her because gosh. of her nails. Uh, I, I, I don't. <laughs> the thing about Ben Stiller is I don't. There's no Walter Mitty without Ben Stiller. This is his passion project. He's been trying to get this movie made for about ten years, and but, this but, is what he's but, so stoked but let me to t- do. Let me go back to that. Let me go back to that. What you just said there. You said there's no Walter Mitty, and I agree with you. But you can. St- he could still make Walter Mitty happy with a different actor. Mm-hmm. And I understand if he wants to do it and he wants to be in it, then good for him. And like I said, this could be a great movie with Ben Stiller in it, and it very well might be. I think it looks epic. It, You're just going in with a little bit of a bad taste. In your mouth, I right? always do every time yeah. he's in a movie, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to leave the movie and go, That was a great yeah. movie. I'm still going to, even if it's a great movie, I'm still going to go, I wish someone else was in it. I just don't like Ben Stiller. It's like there's certain people you just don't like. I wish there wasn't so much color correcting. Yeah. <laughs> but, it feels like there's one too many Instagram filters on the trailer. It looks amazing, but I was like, Why is everything so saturated? Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's but a I little mean, distracting. It's all true. But that, I mean, my point was, is there's just certain people, actors, for some reason or not, whether it's right or wrong, they just rub you the wrong way, and you have to, you have to give like them. Like me sh- and Tom Hanks. Right, exactly. But you still, but you will still watch a movie and acknowledge that that movie is good. You just don't like Tom Hanks, which I think is insane. You don't like Tom but Hanks? I say no, it's insane. Uh, it's insane. I she mean, interviewed him and Josh him, but he's a very it's nice interesting man. Interesting to say that because that trailer a lot reminded me of um, Forrest Gump. Yeah, that's. That's why I feel like I've read some stuff. Please. It's yeah, kind like of a less- me of Big Fish. Yeah, yeah. The Big Fish. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like a mixture of all three of those: Eternal Sunshine, Forrest Gump. Because it has like it's that, that imagination and um, fantastic. Yeah. What's the one where they go into his head? Eternal Sunshine. No. Which one? Oh, uh, G- being John Malkovich. Yeah. Yeah. It it's got, I mean, it's got, it just, there's again, it has all the makings of a great film, yeah. and I think that it's going to be a good film. And like I said, I think Ben Stiller is a great director when he when he does stuff and that I he loves. And I feel like that because it is like you were saying, his passion project, that it has a chance of really changing your perspective on him. If you see it and you're like, "Holy crap, that was amazing," mm-hmm. then you might like like him maybe a smidge more. Yeah, he's he's not going to phone this one in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, I would I can't wait yeah, for you to see this movie, Christian. I, I know, I know. I'm telling you, look, <laughs> I can't I, wait to hear what you say after you see it. Like I'm I said, really uh, Ken, are we having a video issue? For example, there's Schmoes, or Schmoes tweeting it again, and we're having 
video issues again. Um, okay, so we're working on the video issue. If it's working, it's, we're, we're trying to. Uh, Looks like uh, writing love notes. Yeah. So anyway, there's <laughs> another there's another trailer <laughs> real quick before we get into X Men because we have 50 minutes to cover all the X Men movies. So let's. There's another. What's the other one that you that you brought up? Lone Survivor. And Lone Survivor, and that's the one with Mark Wahlberg. And that movie, that's Peter Berg's new. Peter movie. Berg. Yeah. The, the so that movie was that Universal pretty much he had been developing it for a while, mm-hmm. and they said we'll let you make it, but first go do Battleship. And then we'll let you make Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor was a project when you and I were at Silver. Yeah. That Ethan, Ethan's been on the show, yeah? Yeah, I mean, yeah he's yeah. co-hosted, yeah. Yeah. When Ethan was at Silver, he had heard the story, true story, about a soldier who, like, it was a bunch of SEALs who, they went in to take out some Taliban, and pretty much everybody in his group got killed. Yeah. And he was the lone survivor. And I'm giving away something because it's not in the trailer, but basically the movie is this giant battle that happened on the mountain where everyone in the team got killed. He barely survived, ended up in this village, and the villagers took care of him knowing that they would lose their lives if the Taliban ever found out. Right. And uh, Ethan had heard about it, it looks way intense. before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the trailers. So, awesome. well, the, the honest question, and, and be honest here, so you think that Battleship will still be better? <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and there's a couple other trailers that came out this week, and then now a t- tweet comes in about Battleship. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get to X-Men here, because we need to talk about all the X-Men movies. There's so many of them. Uh, we actually did an X-Men podcast back in the day, and our guest at the time was just myself, and our guest was Mark Riley. And, yeah, it was our X-Men <gasps> podcast. You can hear a full Fact X-Men podcast. You if, you go, if you Google Schmoes No Podcast Podbean, you can hear that. that that episode of the X-Men. But it's not the Podbean days anymore. It's the Toad Hop days. And we are talking to Naveed McLargy, Aaron Darling, Tiffany Smith, and we're going to talk about all the X-Men movies. Now, honestly, if you think about it, the first X-Men, yeah, you had Blade and Batman, Tim Burton, and uh, and even the Superman movies had been done before. But X-Men, to me, started the craze. It started the superhero it kind of thing. It is so good. I just watched the it first again one? today. Yeah. yeah. The first one's I forgot. A lot of- I mean, I knew it was good, but when I was watching it, I was like, this was amazing. As a comic book fan, what did you enjoy about the first one? As an X-Men fan and as a, the adaption that Singer did? I think getting the balance of the fun interaction between the X-Men themselves, like where you're seeing um, Wolverine and Cyclops and the banter between them, but then also getting the dark beginning, which you see, like, and I forgot about this, the very beginning of the first X-Men is the very beginning of First Class. Like, it's the exact same scene. Really? Yeah. Um, where Magneto first learns about his powers. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. So right. it balanced the fun side of comics and then that dark side where there's, like, a really good developed story with personal interaction. And that's why I loved it so much. It was amazing. Yeah, it, it, it worked well. And, and it was great because Brian Singer really was known for movies like, you know, The, the Usual Suspects. And, mm-hmm. uh, and what was the one he did also with Ian McKellen, the, the one about the app pupil. Uh, pupil yeah. And he had done movies like that. So no one knew how he was going to handle superhero film. And as I'm rewatching it today, there were so many moments where I was like, Gandalf! <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And, <laughs> where he says stuff and I'm like, that's from that's from Lord of the Rings! Yeah, and, he was, and it was funny because he was Magneto first. You mm-hmm. know? Funny. Uh, I watched uh, First Class in Origins Wolverine today. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, when, we, when we get to those, we're Bad sure going to have. Yeah, Bad well, choice on the second one. I had, I had to. Had to yeah. go there. Yeah. Well, I, well I'm sure. Yeah. We're, we're gonna. I'm sure it's gonna be. We'll let. You, we'll let you. When we get to origins, we'll let you sound off first. <laughs> Sounds good. Um. Did you have uh, the first movie too? What it did was it, it was it was a big risk too because you weren't doing a movie like say Batman or even like a Spider Man movie that came out. Um. I guess like a, two years later, to where as a single character, you mm-hmm. had to find a. Basically, a, co- a bunch of unknown actors, with the exception of like Holly Berry and Anna Paquin was known, but you have to put these groups together. Patrick Stewart. Pa- yeah, but Patrick Stewart. That's true. Sorry, Patrick that's Stewart, true. Sorry. You have to have, but you, they all have to work together. And yeah. Re- Rebecca remains Stamos. You know, throwing her in there, you're like as Mystique. That's interesting. Yeah. So there is a risk there. So it, it the fact that it that it worked. I mean, it speaks volumes. Um, Naveed, what did you think of the first movie? I loved it, but again, like you said, that was that was nobody had really done anything like mm-hmm. that. It was, and if you remember, Singer took a lot of personal stuff, you know, because of his sexuality and everything, and added infused it into the script and being shunned from society mm-hmm. for who and what you are and everything else. And that's really what made that movie yeah. sing. Yeah, Singer. It, it, no, <laughs> absolutely, and that's why it was such a feat. 
yeah. when the second one the second was even one, better. The second one, that was what it was all about. It's, the second one was so good, and yeah. what we got to see in the second one that everyone always brings up is it's the first time you really saw Wolverine Berserker. It's the first time you saw him when, when they break into this school, and he just takes those cops and takes the guy against the refrigerator, and, like, bah, 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 and just kills the guy. You're like, that's fucking Wolverine! Right? Yeah. And then it all, and it's his story, but it was the way they worked together. A lot of people normally say that X Men Two is their favorite. Do you feel that way, Aaron? I actually haven't seen X Men Two ever. Ooh. Yeah. Oh wow! I, X Men Two is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You rewatched awesome. Origins today, but yeah. I, because I just <laughs> why, I know I why, why'd you pick Origins over two? Because I just saw the Wolverine. Yeah. And want, I'm sure okay. pretty it's much everyone in the room did. So yeah. good. Is Origins the one that Ratner really? did? No, or, Origins was Kevin Hood. Oh, I'm going to give it a 7 oh, out of 10. Right, right. Um, but no, because I just saw The Wolverine, I wanted to actually see Origins again okay. and kind of get, see, compare and see contrast. If works, see if it works. Yeah. I th- I think because, that they, I mean, that movie's made a while ago, and there's so much hate, and you know, everyone's like, Origins? ah, this movie yeah. sucks. And so I was kind of like, well, why did it suck? And I watched it again to kind of mm-hmm. figure it out. Rehash why everyone yeah. didn't like it, and you realize yeah, yeah, yeah. you still didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, kind of. Well, but that's, but that's, yeah, but that's why also we got, I mean, and that's why X-Men 2... You know, it played a lot into Wolverine's character and what he was all about. And that whole thing was Stryker, which was amazing. And it was the only time still to this day you see Colossus. Like, we still haven't seen Colossus. I mean, I guess, I guess you saw him in X-Men 3, but I, I tuned that movie out. Yeah. We'll talk about it in a second. I just think that whole movie, the whole damn timeline oh. should be erased. And Ugh. I think Horrendous. X2, honestly, was the one where, and I've said, I think I said this on the podcast a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the Wolverine, where I feel like people forget how great of a casting Hugh Jackman was. Where oh, it's yeah. like everyone thinks everyone of like Robert was, Downey Jr. Tall. Like he's so good. Yeah. He got cast of this and like blew up this character. And I'm like, if you look at from watching X1 to the two and just see how much he grew in this character, yeah. it's amazing. It's it, it, so it really good. Is. I want to take a call from Schmoville and see what they're thinking about the X-Men films. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, you got Terrence. Hey, Terrence. What's up, dude? So, Terrence, we're talking, we just talked about X-Men, X-Men 2. Um, are you on the page of um, of X-Men 2 being your favorite? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because um, I remember, I grew up with the comic book show, I mean, with the, with the anime and TV show in the 90s. So, when I first saw X-Men coming to the big screen, I was, I was excited. I loved the first one, but X-Men 2, that, the breaking into the house scene was just so epic. And so like you good. said before, when he just went berserk, yeah. I remember in the movie theater, everybody just clapped and applauded because that that scene was so gritty and epic. I just loved that the whole entire movie because the story was so grounded. And Brian Singer did a great job of just managing all the cast because it's like an ensemble piece, and everybody got their moment to shine. Even though Cyclops was a little wimpy to me, but it was still good in my eyes. <laughs> that's that's very true, Terrence. Thanks for the call, dude. Always a great call. No um, yeah, I mean that's that's true too. And you had that. I was skeptical about the whole love triangle with Wolverine, Cyclops, awesome. and Jean Grey in the first movie and the second movie. And I'm like, how is this going to pan out? And I thought it was handled well because mm-hmm. it also didn't just make Wolverine a dick. Yeah. Like, you show, it showed a – that's what I love about, about those movies is that you had an A to a B to a character. Characters had arc. They didn't mm-hmm. just – like, there was a movie we just saw last night that I'll mention later that just the character started at A, ended mm-hmm. at A. And it just mm-hmm. – I'll mention it later. But um, it just yeah, I'll, I'll be gone. Uh, Elysium. No. Uh, but that's, uh, look, no! I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the. You guys, I loved it. Yeah, listen, I'm, I, am, I am on the opposite. Ellis loved. Ellis gave a five. Awesome. Ellis gave a five out of five. <laughs> Don't. Ellis gave a five out of five. Okay, Don't worry, that's not nice. <laughs> I'm saying, His opinion I'm, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's I feel good. like you're breaking some hearts in this room right now. I know, but I'm like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but but my point is with Wolverine, it go. He he has an arc, and that's what Singer did so well. And then you get the X Men three. Ugh. Because for some odd reason, <laughs> Singer wanted to leave to go do Superman. Yeah. And he gives it to Brett, who is making decisions to give it to all the directors. Naveed. My old boss. Your old boss. <laughs> <laughs> but, but how does a decision like that? No, seriously, no, no. Take us. Naveed is part of the studio system, has been in many of these rooms and these, cast and, and these decisions to hire directors. Ugh. In what world does it make sense to go from Brian Singer to Brett Radner? How does something like that go about? That's you know a lot of it. It's political. A lot of it has to do with just who they think they can control better, or who they think comes in and like the, at the right place at the right time. I mean, I've, I've, I have some crazy stories which I won't bore you with, and I've heard some stories that are. I mean, you know, you know Jeff Wadlow. Just to jump ahead really quickly, yeah. who wrote and directed Kickass Two. Yeah, you know how he got that job? 
Because what's his face quit, right? Yeah, but do you, he literally said, "Hey, here," and he wrote the script and he handed it to them. And he goes, "This." He wrote it on spec. Yeah, he, he and, said and, this. He told this story at Comic Con. Yeah. yeah, and he wrote it. Well, and and he wrote it on spec. And then they said, "Not only do we want you to, we're gonna, we like this. We want you to direct it because he'd been directed." Who knows what happened? It was just yeah. so. It was. But extra, Ratner, I know. It, right, there was a moment when Ratner, frankly, in Hollywood, was kind of cool. But, but yeah, but I mean, there's look. Even that movie he did, Tower Heist, wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. But the thing yeah. is, and and Rush Hour one. But that's yeah. not the guy you want to you do. You know the biggest irony in all of this. Yeah, Ratner is now a financier. I, I that, but that makes sense. I mean, the guy's a, he's a businessman. He yeah. he he's a player. You know, he knows he, he gets he gets the game done. I'm not, I'm not disputing that at all. The guy the guy is a Hollywood player and, and absolutely deserves to be where he where he is. But in regards to an X Men movie, he's the last guy that needs yeah. to be around but that I franchise. I feel like sometimes it's hard because because it panned out badly. <laughs> Sometimes you want to give a director that you're curious about that you're not sure that they're going to do it exactly the same way because it might be something amazing, you know. My, right. my you favorite thing to do, yeah. sorry, go, my, go, go. No, my my favorite thing to do is always to take the character based, like even I mean I've done it before. Take the indie art house director and put them into a bigger movie and let that you know the guys who really are about character and everything else and let dude you can get a great second unit director yeah. to shoot all the action yeah. stuff. You can get a great DP. You can get whatever. Why give it to Steven Summers? Right. I, mean, right. I, I don't understand it. And because it was just and like, and this is, this is a perfect example for me of why a Ratner doesn't work. As funny as the bit is, there was a big YouTube video going around about the juggernaut. And he runs in as the, the as the, I'm the juggernaut bitch. And it was hysterical. And because Brett Ratner, Brett Ratner thought it was funny, he put it in the movie. Yeah. You don't put that in the movie. That's a bit. That's like a Saturday Night Live thing. And it's like he just like, oh, it would be funny. It would be a callback to the YouTube thing. It's No, you got you to gotta be consistent because you have to think about the future mm-hmm. and what's going on with this franchise. And he didn't do that. And here's the biggest thing. It's such a trivial thing. But, Navita, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. <laughs> Give me the, the, the answer that obviously comes to your mind. What is Magneto's power? Metal. Then why the fuck is his hideout in the woods? <laughs> it made no sense. It's little shit like that that made no sense. Well, the guy also, wasn't thinking. You, it's also you can tell when someone is a fan of the comic books and the comic book characters because yeah. you're like they would have thought they thought about that about that. If anyone attacked him, he's dead. <laughs> he's hit him with a tree. He's dead. Yeah. He, so it's like there's no cars. There's nothing. There's fucking yeah. trees. Anyway, so uh, so that movie and it's like and then you t- Rogue wants to lose her powers and it's like oh I don't want to be and then they take it away and then what I hated Magneto who was so. Is is like all about the mutants. Is like brotherhood and everything. But the second uh, Mystique loses her powers, screw you. Leaves her there. Toast. Yeah. That's bullshit. Right. And it, he didn't care about the character development. And that's why when people try to defend that movie, I just say I don't think it I was need a. To watch it again. I, I like don't remember. I remember it was so bad that I've deleted it. Well, Mark Riley, who is who has talked to us a lot about X Men. What what's your thoughts on X Men Three? X Men Three. Yeah. The worst thing they could have done was killing Cyclops at the beginning. Right. Why? Right, Cyclops, leader of yeah. the X Men. Right, you know, and James Marsden, a fantastic actor, yeah. who uh, it was building up to this, yeah. this, and you even mentioned in X Two the love triangle between Wolverine, mm-hmm. Jean Grey, and Cyclops, and we never got to see that fully explored because she kills him right at the beginning. Just, it, it just pissed me off. Yeah, I know it, it is, and it, all that stuff that happened, it just, it just didn't work, and it was, and it was a mess, and every, everybody knew it was a mess. That's why, because Ratner was supposed to do part four. And it didn't and it didn't work. Condolences for the death of Cyclops. Yeah, it, it works out. And then you know, and then but but what I do, what I will pay respect to um, Mangold, who directed this latest Wolverine, is the fact that he did. He still paid paid mm-hmm. respects to the timeline mm-hmm. because it went into that story of Jean Grey and Wolverine and what happened there. But personally, I think that it should be blown. That whole timeline should be blown off the face of the earth. I'm very curious. And Aaron, what do you, how do you think Brian Singer is going to handle? the X-Men 3 timeline in Days of Future Past. Like, are they going to tie things up? Because, you remember, X, uh, Professor X and Magneto are, are walking. He's walking with his legs <laughs> to Jean Grey's house in the in oh, the third one. I thought you were about to... No, in the third one. In the, no, 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 in the third movie. <laughs> so the question is, in X-Men First Class, he gets shot on the beach. So how are they going to explain that? Time travel. I know, all this time travel nah, they stuff. Won't. I think you that... Think so? They, they won't. They have an opportunity to go back and erase all of X Men Three potentially. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to do that. I mean, Fast and Furious fixed it. <laughs> they can they can totally yeah. edit out the stuff they didn't like. I mean, they. I'm pretty sure this is going to happen to a certain extent. 
What, the, the fact that they're going to erase it, you think? You think not they're going to erase it? Not all of the but So, you, so you, you do think they're going to address it? I hope oh, that they yes. do. Okay, I think cool. so, absolutely. Okay, well, because, I mean, he's familiar with the fan base. He yeah. knows how pissed off everyone is at yeah. Hackman 3. And, and, said, Sorry, and, and he feels responsible, too. Because right. He, and if he yeah. doesn't, it's almost like a big middle Actually, finger to everyone that liked it yeah. up until that point, I think. Yeah, and I think, I think the fact, what again, going to what Matthew Vaughn did, you know, which we'll get into in the second half, because um, we'll talk about uh, X Men First Class, then we'll talk about Wolverine. But before we 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 just talked about a shit box, let's end with a shit box. <laughs> uh, Wolverine's origins. You got Roger Rabbit oh. claws. What Wolverine's origins? Yeah. You like that movie? I did. No, Honestly? you did not. No, wait, you, you go go ahead. Not go ahead. the wait, Wolverine Matt, that wait, just let, came out. Let Matt Locke defend his his client. Go go ahead. So Matt Locke. Yeah. Uh, how I, how do you defend this movie? Okay, listen. Yeah. I and I enjoyed the origin from like beginning in the World War II. He and Liev Schreiber. Schreiber. You weren't so. a comic book fan though. No. You okay. Okay. No. I tell you what. I, it's like people who liked Iron did, Man three. What, what? So you like? Let me. <laughs> but, but let me. But let me ask you before. I, you shouldn't get. You shouldn't get roasted for this. But I want to no, ask you. Did okay. It, did it, I go ahead and roast me. I'm not, I, I don't want to roast you. I, just, okay. I don't want to roast you. I want to ask you. I'm not taking it, it personally. It I'm, didn't bother you. It didn't bother you that in X Men one, Wolverine and Sabretooth fight each other. Okay. <laughs> Never met one another. Mm-hmm. Fight each other. They're not brothers, mm-hmm. but they fight. And then because it'll be cool to make them brothers in Origins? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> now it sounds a little stupid. Yeah, it does. It okay. <laughs> right. Uh, I, the only thing that I didn't like was that like their bones came out of their hands. And right. they were like, that was weird. Uh, I, I thought that like there were some pretty fun parts. The only thing I didn't like about the whole thing was at the end, like we talked about, it was Baraka. At the end, yeah. it was Baraka yeah. from Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah. Deadpool, uh, they fucking pissed all over Deadpool's face. Oh, yeah. Baraka yeah. pissed yeah. right in his face. One yeah. of the best characters. They just said, Again, hey, Deadpool, I'm going to piss in your face. Why? Because I want to piss in your face. This is where I'm talking about actors shouldn't play two superheroes. But that's not his fault. Disaster that, no, twice. Here, here's what happened. So <laughs> Three times. Happened. He was in Blade already. But Naveed, Naveed, back me up on this one too, because this is this is Gavin Hood, yeah. who directed a great film called Satsi, which yeah. was a very unknown film. He's got Ender's Game coming out too. Okay, but so he does, see, he, Satsi was a great film and very maybe cost $30 in a sticker bar to make. Yeah. And so then he gets a big movie, and like you said, the studio can sticker. control him. Well, first he did uh, the one, the kidnapping one. What's Reese Witherspoon? Which one was that? Um, but it's still a sp- R- rendition. Okay, a, yeah. a bigger movie, but still right, small right, right. in scale, as opposed to Origins. Right. So Fox gets a hold of him and says, you're going to do everything we say. And then he's like, well, but I have notes. I go, we don't care about your notes, more or less, because if you don't listen to us, you're going to do Satsi too." Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hutch, my old boss, was the head of the studio at the time, and a lot of the stuff I heard, because we actually looked at Ender's Game and wanted to buy it when I was at Regency, but I should, I should be careful saying this. Part of the problem was the Gavin on... Um, on uh, Wolverine, yeah, didn't want to move the camera, and you know, it was ve- he was very like wanting to tell not a comic book movie, but a character mm. movie, yeah. like a small. That's this is where it backfires. What I said earlier, this is one of those places. Where yeah, it but backfires. I wish they would have done that though, because they didn't do yeah. that enough. Because it was too much. Because it felt like when they started getting the character for origin, and you watch it today, Aaron. Yeah. Right as you start to get into something that you might care about, then there's ridiculous effects and like the truck thing and the helicopter yeah. and those claws. That was so distracting to me. I felt like it was so over the top and I feel like you're being hit over the head by thing after thing after thing. And although that could be entertaining, I guess, um, you lose it was it. hard for me to watch mm-hmm. yeah. and stay in it. I was like, what's happening right now? Yeah, you just, you and just. And I love Deadpool too, so I have to say. They gotta right. make that movie. Well, yeah, I they know. gotta get it. They gotta get it right because, I mean, you have Ryan Reynolds, who is known for fast talking. Witty would be perfect, dude. and it's perfect for, for Deadpool. And when you yeah. see him, you're like, yes. And yep. then they shut his mouth off, and you're like, what are they oh doing? God. It's like it's almost like that thing again. If you haven't watched Iron Man three, I'm going to give you five seconds to turn off the computer. Great. <laughs> you, it's an Iron Man three when they reveal Mandarin. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's hey, guy. Shane Black giving you the fu yeah. if yeah. you're not a, if you're not a comic book fan, yeah. and it's the same thing with what they did with Deadpool. But anyway, Origins was was a colossal like misfire. Well, and, and it's so interesting because when you look at what Marvel has done now with Avengers and Iron Man and solo films, where it's like they've done such a good job with it. Yeah. And this case, they started with ensemble. the whole ensemble, and then goes to, goes to solo, and it's yeah, it's Fox. And, well, it's Fox. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think I think so, and I think though the the thing well, we'll talk about when we get back from the break is that. They were because they were going to do a Magneto Origins movie mm-hmm. if Wolverine Origins would have done well, but it didn't. 
And then that started the, pro- the process into time. first, yeah, class. first so class. So when we get back from break, we're going to talk about first class more, what we loved about it, and then we'll talk about what we hope to see. I'm- I yeah. may go. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. be back. Wait, before yeah. I go, no, my, I, can, my, I just found out my mom, yeah. my aunt, and my ninety-nine-year-old grandmother are watching fans. in Portland, Oregon. Oh. They're telling me to give them a shout out. Oh, so. Okay, that's very nice. Hi guys, they're huge fans. They've been watching this show for months. Um, so <laughs> my, yeah. my grandmother has no idea what we're no talking clue. about. No clue. Who's the Dane Cook fellow? Uh, <laughs> so are you? Uh, you're going to be back on August fifteenth. Yeah. You'll be hosting the entire show. Yes. All right. So we'll, we'll sorry after run. Yeah, man. Do your thing. So uh, Naveed Makalarji, make sure are you at Naveed MC? I don't. You think. I, you never check your Twitter. It doesn't matter. Just email him. I gave it to an intern and had her do it. Oh, perfect. All right, guys. So Naveed's going to be leaving us. We'll be back with Aaron Darling, Tiffany Smith, myself, Christian Harloff, talking about X-Men First Class. We'll talk about the Wolverine. And then we'll talk about what we want in X-Men Days of Future Past. Schmoes no podcast. I love right this. I did this for you, Tiffany. I'll let it play. This is from the X Men cartoon. You love it. Yeah, it's how you, oh my god! Because we're talking about X Men. We knew this, pick- this brings back so many memories right? from my childhood. Not sure. Good I ones or bad too. ones? Good. Uh, well, Same. the bad ones when my dad would lock me in the cellar, but <laughs> at least I had the black and white TV. I used earth. to sneak downstairs in the morning, mm-hmm. and like I was only allowed to watch a certain amount of television. So I'd sneak down and turn it down as low as I possibly could, and sit like right up against Watching the it? screen. Wow! <laughs> so I could watch multiple episodes. That's, I loved it. Is that why you have eye problems? Huh? Oh, Is that why you have eye problems? Probably, no, nice. yeah, probably yeah. why I wear my big nerdy glasses. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, we're talking about the X Men movies. We've already talked it. about uh, X Men One, X Two, <laughs> Three, <laughs> Origins, uh, and now we're going to get into some of the other cool ones. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take some calls from Schmoville and see what you guys are feeling as far as your overall thoughts. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, let's take a phone call from Schmoville. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, this is Todd Myers. Hey. hey, man, what's going on, Tyler? So, Tyler, uh, what are your uh, thoughts? You're talking about um, X-Men. What do you got? What movies? Well, before I call, I just want to say that I know we have to go take a pain on the store, but why, before, besides that, you're still the man hard off. I still love you. Wait, I, I missed I that. What? I uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't really hear you, Tyler. What, what, what was going on? I thought that the tweet that I uh, sent you earlier about Ben Stiller, I don't care what you say about him. You're still the man to me. You're still awesome. Oh, thank you, Tyler. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it very much. No, hey, it was it, that's that's the beauty of Schmoes. No, my friend, is the fact that we just we just love to talk movies. And I thought that your your tweets were very they were very intelligent, very thought out. We love the debating movies and talking movies. That's that's what we do here. So no, uh, absolutely, do it any time, man. I always talk to you guys about movies. Thank you so much for it. So what, X Men? What's your uh, what what's your favorite? What do you like? What are you looking forward to? Well, my favorite is the one we're talking about right now, X-Men First Class. X-Men First Class. All right, great. I love the, the, what a way to get into that. Now, what it, who was your – you tell us your favorite character, and from there we'll branch off and talk about the movie. So who was your favorite character in X-Men First Class? Um, it's hard. They're all great. <laughs> yeah, but, it's tough. Well, my favorite, my favorite character is I, – I love Beast. I think he's badass and awesome. Okay. But my favorite performance, my favorite character was the psychopath Earth Magneto. I thought he was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Two great points to hit on. Thank you, Tyler, very much. Uh, appreciate the phone call. Yeah, look. Let's talk about Magneto first, because James Fassbender, who just blew me away from the first time I really re- remember. S- what I say, James? Yeah. My, sorry, Mike, <laughs> Michael. I, James, like, James? I, I, I combine James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. But Michael Fassbender, um, first time I really recognized him and remember him as from Inglorious Bastards. Really, he really kind of blew me away. And forgot he, about Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. That was on the other day, and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. Fassbender. He's and awesome. He's awesome. It's the first time I really remembered him, and he is so amazing yeah. as Magneto and who gives a shit if his accent pops out here and there it doesn't matter I didn't even notice it, it's just like it's he's so good that scene when he walks into that bar when he's hunting down the Nazis and he makes and he just kills those three old Nazis and you're like oh this guy <laughs> See, that's, so that's the question I have you know you brought up Origins Wolverine and how it probably crapped out the Magneto Origins but that was apparently the movie that they were developing they combined it they combined it, yeah, yeah, obviously. But like, don't you still want to see that? 
like Magneto hunting down Nazis. I, 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 but I mean, I think we saw it. But yeah, yeah. you get I it. Mean, I, 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 I guess I you get it. it. But I, 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 I it would. Yeah. I mean, look. Would I love to see Fastbender? You know, at a Seven Eleven for two hours ordering pizza. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because the guy take so out good. some Nazis right. with the pizza. Maybe, That'd be awesome. but like he's he's so good at doing. He and that's the thing that he did. And again, bringing up that point that we said to Lucas is the fact that it was that origin story I wanted to see. It was that thing yeah. between him and because McAvoy is so good as yeah. Professor X yeah. in a different way. I love that we didn't just get the I'm nerdy Professor X and I've always been nerdy Professor X. He wasn't He's a that little guy. bit of a cat. I love I, that. I love yeah. that he was he, he was hitting on the women using the same with lines. his mutant powers. Yeah. That was great. I loved it. It was it's and and I loved the, again. That's what Matthew Vaughn I think did so well was that yeah. character development and the mm-hmm. setup and look. Yes, there were a lot of things that he did in the first class movies that don't. Only they may make some problems for Brian Singer for sure, but it also went against a lot of what the X Men comic books did. But you got to remember that he's working with something here, Origins and X Men Three, that he's got to do something, well, and, and here, he did it. Here's the thing for me: the fact that he actually took the beginning of the first X Men and used it again in this movie was amazing. Yeah, I loved that because I did you're too. getting you're getting the fact that he is a fan of these films. Yeah, and. I am a huge comic book fan, and I've always said this. I'm not a purist. I don't think that it has to be exactly like as all of the stories works. in the comics. Yeah. As long as it works. As long as it's a real, legit story. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that the changes and the tweaks here and there it worked. worked. I, look, I saw it with Riley, uh, yeah. and we saw it for our screening. And remember, I looked over at you, and I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I was, yeah me too. Oh, I felt like I was 12 years old, yeah. and I'm like, this is one of those movies I felt like, oh, my God, this movie's going to stick with me. It was like, I gave a five yeah. out of five schmoes when yeah. I saw it. The music was fantastic. Everything worked so well. And you know who was great? Kevin Bacon. Oh, Kevin yeah. Bacon oh my God. As so the villain good. was so good. Like, when you hear Kevin Bacon's in it, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, really? How's that going to work? And you feel like an idiot for asking that question because yeah. he's so good as Sebastian, and he just is so evil. Yep. And in an evil human way, too, like to where he's like, it, it's like he sets up that kind of code for Magneto. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like that kind of code. We don't kill our own. I thought like, that whole cast was really good, except for January it's Jones. Emma Frost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love Emma Frost. The, Just didn't no, think she worked there. Her, yes. What about, yes. what about the Kravitz girl? January Jones. She was fine. I, I didn't like her. You didn't like her? No. I didn't mind the Kravitz girl. So Some people have minor, probably, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, she was. She I, was minor, but. You could cast you know, anyone. You could cast me. And. Well, she's flapping yeah. around in the strip but club. I could have done without that. You kind of don't want to like her anyway because she's the first one to turn her back on everybody that was looking after her. She's like, ah, okay. You know, and she gets the other dude killed. Yeah, that's but that's that's again. It's one of those things that you just. You, but you can. It's it's so minuscule. You yeah. can kind of turn. She's probably of, one of the five that Lucas was talking about. Didn't get asked back. For, yeah, for I mean this. January Jones yeah, right. for me was the. I rewatching it today. I was like, it feels like yeah. there are moments where she just got her lines two and seconds know, yeah, before. Yeah, that's funny. I guess I was. I, in, I was wondering if she's playing that intentionally and just kind of. Very that, co- cold yeah, as very ice. Cold. Yeah, because she was crystal. That's yeah. all she does. That's right. all she ever does. Yeah. Yeah. She never does anything other than that. So. I mean, she I don't know. Great. Yeah, she looked fine. Oh, yeah, she she looked hot, like Emma but, Frost, yeah. but but I really like the Emma Frost from uh, Whedon's run on Astonishing X Men, and I, and that that was in my head. Mm-hmm. And so when January Jones shows mm-hmm. up, I'm like, yeah, she looks like. Uh, well, well, that's where you're like, if things are different than the comics, sometimes they do work, and sometimes so they yeah. Don't. But the essence of the character <laughs> wasn't yeah. there. So here's yeah. what I want to do. I want to uh, our our great friend Leanne. Le- I always pronounce her name. Le- I say I think it's French. I say Le Coutier, and 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 Ellis goes French and goes Le Couture. So I don't know which ones. I mean, Le Couture does not sound right. Le Coutier <laughs> is French. Ellis, I, mean, I mean, Ellis goes Southern. Okay. Ellis goes Southern. L A Le, Le Couture. Uh, so whatever one is right, uh, Leanne, would you please, when you have time, whoever you have in the studio today, an X Men First Class poster would be fantastic. Um, Ooh, uh, with yeah. Aaron Darling, and Tiffany, and Mark, and the Wild Man, and who, and whoever else is in the uh, studio today that you could uh, do if you can do it. Uh, anyway, so you have First Class, and this movie just it just works. It knocks mm-hmm. it out of the park. It gets people excited again. People were raving about it. It was a yeah. word of mouth thing. And then, you know, is Matthew Vaughn coming back? What's the deal? How's it going to happen? But before we get that, we hear Wolverine's going to have a new movie. It's right. going to be the Wolverine story. And mm-hmm. there was Darren Aronofsky that was supposed to do. Yeah. And then that would have been, been amazing. I wish. How crazy would that have been? Oh, and my then, God. But then, he, got, I, he got really far into the production of that, really the pre-production. Want, he was telling yeah. Hugh Jackman, you got to, like, bulk up. Yeah, I want to yeah, make yeah. you the short, stocky Wolverine right. from the comics. I'm so mad. When I walked out of the Wolverine, I kept thinking. Thinking, well, this is an okay movie, but I wish Darren was in it. I know, yeah. 
I okay. loved it. I see. Um, I, I'm, I freaking loved it. I saw no, I, I think we have. I think we have a very. This is what it's great about the Wolverine. Again, if you haven't seen the Wolverine um, from about for the next ten minutes, I'd say tune out because this is going to be kind of a uh, spoiler heavy on the Uh-oh. Wolverine. I gotta. Have you not on. seen? Have you not seen it? I still haven't seen it. Uh, then you better. I that, can't let, believe you. No, that's. I'm gonna talk. I, you I, talk I can take it? the spo- Yeah, Honestly, I'll, I'll take I, the spoilers. It's, not, it's okay. No, it's not spoilers. the same as Iron Man Spoiler. 3 where it's like, same, oh my gosh, something. spoilers. But still, yeah. you're still going to hear about it. But uh, yeah, look, okay. the movie, to me, here's what you have to know going about the movie. If you're expecting a full-out X-Men movie, big budget studio summer film, you're going to be very disappointed. Mm-hmm. If you go in knowing that this is a character piece that studies more on the character of Logan, more yeah. so than Wolverine, you will not be disappointed. Yeah. Because yeah, I think this, that's is, great. this is a character piece on Logan. And, the- it, and I'm happy about that because I've seen a lot of Wolverine. I want to I want to see what Logan's all about. I want to see that heart and how and how he, a little bit more of him as that human side. Mm-hmm. And it worked for me. And we get to see that character in him in the first X-Men where it's like he takes Rogan and he's really trying to protect her and, you know, you can see that he falls in love. And in this one, which it's based off of the Chris Claremont book, which is one of the best Wolverine stories ever. I think it was out in 1982 or something. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Miller, but, too? The first four, it was like a limited series yes, of yeah. four. And it was the Miller, art. too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but the fact that I read it right before seeing the movie, which I'm trying not to do as much, I read it, went to see the film, and still loved Dug every it. second of it. Yeah, and you, yeah. you were telling me what I thought was cool, and I remembered it when you told me, was there's a scene in, in Wolverine. Oh, my gosh. Where he's going to try to save um, the girl, and he's walking. And all these samurais are just shooting arrows into his yep. back and his arms, and he's just stretched out. And it's an actual shot yeah. from the comic. Which, and I remember when the Watchmen came out. I remember watching that in a the theater and being like, "Oh my gosh, these are frames from the book!" And it made yeah. me so excited. And the same thing happens with this film, where you're yeah. watching and you're like, "I remember being really affected looking at that frame and being like, oh my gosh, this is on the big screen.' And it, I mean." I, I like geeked it was, out. Yeah, I was, yeah. and I, and it was kind of when I could see that. Now, to be fair, what I didn't like about the movie, and a couple of people have been tweeting this in as well, too, was I thought Viper was unnecessary. Who's the villain in the movie? She was just, it was like, hey, let's yeah. throw a mutant in there. There's a stupid snake face. And it's it like, wasn't perfect. The movie no. wasn't perfect. No, it wasn't. But it was, for me, I gave it four out of five. And I thought that uh, I thought that you know again the third act from everything that they set up that Mm -hmm. there was a cool fight for sure and I thought they kind of missed what could have been great with the Silver Samurai, Um, but it was still yeah. Did you like the did you so what did you think overall? You said it was okay. What was your overall? Why didn't you like it as much as you wanted to? But I thought I'd like it more. I mm-hmm. gave it a seven out of ten. Um, there were just a couple of things that kind of missed the mark for me. I love Japan. Tokyo is my favorite cities. Why aren't there more ninjas in this movie? And the ninja scene was kind of, I didn't feel like we get a lot of it. And what we did get is like a super close up, right. shaky shot of these fight scenes when the action is so cool. I wish we could see more of it. Right. And in the comics, he fought a lot of ninjas. And I also feel like I agree with you about Viper. I thought, uh, kind of a non-villain here. Not that exciting. I don't really care that much about it. The love interest, I didn't get it. I didn't feel the chemistry. It wasn't there at all for me. Hugh Jackman's amazing. Yeah. He's about to turn 45. He looks better than he's ever loved. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets better and better every time he plays Wolverine. And this is, I mean, a great film for him. I think um, he's able to really capture a lot of different elements of that character Mm -hmm. as Logan, as in Wolverine. So I really enjoyed seeing that. And to me, I mean, Hugh Jackman made the movie. Yeah, absolutely. He he did. And he just is a company. He knows this character so well. And he's played this character more than anyone else has played any other character. I think it was was eight. no, Including first well, class? Well, it'll be eighth in the new one, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. That's Which, a, yeah, yeah. So I got to do the junket and interview him and yeah. talk to James Mangold as well. And again, where we're talking about when someone is in a movie and is a fan mm-hmm. of the character and of the stories, he had said, he was like, I've been wanting to get this story made into a film for like almost... I want to say he said like 10 years or something crazy, like where he'd been working on it. He said it's at Comic-Con too, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and it's so cool because I asked him, I was like, do you think there's anything you know about Wolverine that fanboys don't know? And he's like, you know, I try to throw some things in here and there sometimes, but he's like, you can't do it. He's like, I developed, I thought that Wolverine might be afraid of flying like an animal because he has this animalistic quality to him. And he was like, the fans didn't like it. (laughs) He's like, I still stick to it though. And it's cool when you think of, 
an actor who looks that deeply into he the does. comic book he character does, and yeah. say, you know. He, he really does because, again, giving this guy all the credit in the world. Because he, and he also seems like the, the sweetest guy to his fans. Like He, he was freaking so, offered yeah. me claws. He really? was like, if I had him here, I would have given him to you. And I'm like, don't even joke about he's that. So, dude, he's so awesome. <laughs> like he was, he was talking about like So this will also set up everything else, too, because he was on – when I was in that Hall H panel and he was talking about the Wolverine and him and Mangold were up there. And by the way, I have to yell at Mangold a little bit here. In the Wolverine footage they showed at Hall H, they show a scene when, the you know, the very one of the end scenes when he's fighting the one guy and he goes, what kind of monster are you? And he goes, Psh, the Wolverine. They showed that. At the at Hall H, and it's like that's I'm like now I know that guy's bad, but oh. and it, they showed it twice. And I'm like, like I remember it being that scene being in the trailer. It was three. What well, that scene was not in the trailer. Not not that. Not that. And not what I saw. Anyway, so Maybe speaking we didn't which, see the face. so then well, then uh, uh, Hugh Jackman went. And he told he told all these stories about everything, how he how much he loved playing the character mm-hmm. and everything they did for the character and what he wanted to do and how excited he was to continuously play the character. Some people, I mean, look, I think that Robert Downey Jr. is getting sick of playing Tony Stark, and to no fault of his own. You yeah. Know, if he's getting sick of it, Hugh Jackman legitimately loves playing this guy. He loves doing. You could see it in his face and the way he speaks yeah. about it, yeah. which was so well, cool. I think, I think he loves it and he knows how good he is too. I mean, you would never know, and he's the most humble person ever. But at Comic Con, he was saying that he feels this is the best he's been at mm-hmm. Wolverine, and a lot of that is attributed to James Mangold, yeah. his director, who is known for bringing you know amazing Three performances Yuma, yeah. Yeah. out of his actors and I think that's really cool too to know that he's aware of like yeah you're gonna like this yeah well and he was saying too <laughs> he, this was the most lead time he's had up to any of the films so he felt like his body was as close as he wanted it to be yeah. and I heard, I read somewhere that he called up Dwayne Johnson to ask him about really? gaining some oh, weight oh I'd love yeah. to know if that was yeah. true that's so um, amazing that's amazing yeah. it is because he was he eating did. like chicken six times a day he yeah. keeps saying yeah, he's he's like, like, oh. I want to take a call from Schmobile hey you're in Schmobile, who do we got? Hey, how you going? It's Justin from Australia here. What's up, Hi. man? I was one of the nicest people in the in the entire world. How are you, man? What's going on? You, yeah, you know it. Um, yeah, I just like to talk about the Wolverine. Yeah, I myself, um, I was a little let down by the Wolverine. Okay. I thought it was filled with too many cliches and twi- um, too many like dumb twists. I thought the romance wasn't there. But I will say, the Wolverine is the movie where I said. Hugh Jackman is the Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This guy just totally. captured me in just his aggressive manner, and he really just sent chills up my spine just watching the guy. Because when I was watching, like, X-Men 1, 2, and 3, I didn't go, wow, that's Wolverine. This was the movie that Hugh Jackman just did such a phenomenal job. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. Thanks for the call, dude, as always. Um, I agree, and I think that the, no worries. I think the reason why is because he's just played – the character so much and knows mm-hmm. him so much. And I think probably, again, Aaron, going off your point that James Mangold w- knew this guy's played this character so yep. much. He knows the character. I want to sit down. I'm going to respect him and respect how he's played it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's play uh, respect to the comic books. And they did that. But regardless of how great the movie is, everyone's talking about the end scene, the cr- after the credits. Uh-huh. I mean, the after the credits scene is the best after the credit scene probably I teared up a little bit. It's probably the best after the credit <laughs> scene that you've seen in any in any Marvel movie. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. And I said I was sitting next to El Mayambe at the theater and I started Whoa, whoa, the- wait, wait, breaking story, breaking story. <laughs> whoa, wait. I a was minute. in New York. I was whoa. in New York. Who? Do this. We wish I had music bump um, bump bump. Stop. Bum, bum. So the credit and credit scene comes yeah. on and I like started clapping before everyone else and he got so embarrassed. I was really? like, "Yep, I yeah. just embarrassed everyone in this theater." Well, oh, again, God. The screen that I was in, there were people losing their shit, no, too. Yeah. Riley, do you hilarious. know what the scene is? Yeah, I've heard. Okay, yeah, so yeah. the scene is so great. Again, spoilers for anyone who hasn't Serious seen it. Serious spoiler if you've not Serious. seen it. Serious. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, Wolverine, it's two years later after the Wolverine ends, and he's in the airport, and it's hysterical. The, the, the metal detectors go off, obviously. And then he just, like, his body, like, tenses up and freezes, and, and why? You know Magneto Magneto is there! Magneto is there, and he turns around, yes. and, and he's just like, and, and he's like, what do you want from me? And it's like this back and forth, and then everyone in the airport freezes, and no one moves, you're like, oh! <gasps> Where's X? And he's like, how? and then Wolverine's like, how is this possible? Because, you know, he you thinks know, Professor X, X is dead. Is dead. Yeah. And he look, and then he rolls out, and I can't remember the actual line that he says to him, but it's more or less like what you think is, and whatever it is. Yeah. And then what was so great for me in that is because I had seen the X Men uh, Days of Future Past trailer twice. Mm-hmm. So I know now that Old Man Logan runs into these two fuckers later on, too. Yeah. And it's like, how does it go on from that point to now? Because 
X Men First Class is the next movie. Now. I mean, they have a lot of ex- they got a lot of explaining to do. To do. What yeah. happens now with did James Mangold and Brian Singer meet up and say, "Look, this is what I need to do." I'm here. sure. I right. mean, dude, it's then, Mark yeah, Millar from to. Fox. Mark Millar is the cre- creative consultant for you know all the Marvel properties. Uh-huh. So he must be linking all these movies together or, or have a hand in it. At least that's what I'll say. I, not to discount your point, and probably Mangold is talking to Singer. I'm, I bet they're all doing that. Yeah. Well, I, our, our, sorry, but our, our buddy uh, Joseph Hemmings at JPH29, what Professor X says to him is, you're, you remember, you're not the only one who has gifts, mm-hmm. is what he says to him. So, yeah, it just, it, just, it just reminded me again of seeing that footage and going, okay, so what I know from the footage I saw is somehow it's, it's in the far future and on Logan's older – which has got to be explained too. How he's getting older. He's got gray hair, grayish, grayish hair. Well, and I mean, you know, he ages slowly. Slowly. Then. So, I mean, so, so like, how far into the future are we here? And how do Magneto and and Professor X get there? You know what I mean? There's a lot of questions. There's so much. Yeah. And like they brought everyone out. Like mm-hmm. on this panel, everyone was at. Brian Singer was in the middle, and then everyone to his right was from the the X Men um, first class, and then mm-hmm. everyone to his left was old school. You know, oh, that's and, cool. And yeah. it was back. And forth, and yeah. they just you could tell you're like, Holy shit! Like, this is why this reminded me of the of the Avengers. Because yeah. what the Avengers did is that in these movies, they set it up. This is essentially the same thing, yeah. You're getting this now, like, and there are some concerns where how are you going to manage all of this? It's got to be a two hour and 40 mo- minute movie, it has to be. Wow, yeah. I'll take three hours, man. Right? It sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so Tiffany, Standard you edition. know, somewhat some details of like what this storyline is. Honestly, I, I'm like, I'm trying to not go too much based off of the comic stories because of what happened in first class where, you know, they're going to have to change a lot of things because the storylines have changed along the way. Yeah. I think that something they're definitely going to pull from is the old man Logan story, which if you've not read yeah, that. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's yeah. one of the best. So, so good. That needs to be. Well, uh, yeah, lot, absolutely. That's what they're absolutely. saying. Absolutely. The They've brain. actually said that they... It, when we asked at the junket, we were like, so will there be some old man Logan stuff coming up soon? Would you want to do that as a story? And he was like, he didn't really say a lot. So I think that there's going to be quite a bit of that in this new film. At least that's what I'm really hoping for. Okay. Um, So I honestly, because of what I said with Iron Man 3, where it was like, I was so hoping for the amazing things that didn't happen, um, that I'm trying to leave it a little bit more open to interpretation as to what's going to actually happen and how things are going to play out. You want to be surprised. Yeah. Kind of, you know, well, and movie. Especially even after like Superman where it was like, how many trailers did I see? How many yeah. things did I hash out? Yeah, how much totally did people agree. talk about it? And then I went in and I felt like I saw all the awesome stuff. There were, weren't really any big surprises. Yeah. And I didn't feel this like awe moment, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what I really want to get from this movie. Yeah. Um, Aaron, so what would you like to see from Days of Future Past if you had it your way? I want to see the the original X Men cast interacting with the younger versions of themselves. I think and, you're going to get it. Yep, you're going to get it. Wait, J T. Why come here? Why are you shaking your head? Wait, I wanted to know why J T. was just shaking his head like a disapproving parent. What is it? Well, if you hear, if you know Days of Future Past, basically Wolverine goes back by himself. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like. In yeah. The trailer, so too. I don't think I think they're going to do this as you're going to see maybe 30 percent of the new crew. Oh, I'm sorry, the old crew, and you're going to. It's mainly a first class sequel, I think, more than X Men sequel. Okay. And you JTI always talk about the past thing where, you know, in comics and in any tra- like time travel story yeah, yeah. where people can't see themselves. They can't do too much to change things. So right. it's like they're, I'm, he's yeah, going to go back. Like, and I'm so, <laughs> I'm so curious how this is going to work I don't out. I Comic-Con, Brian Singer kind of hinted that we might be seeing something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of which, so, speaking of the stuff we're going to see. So, Tiffany, then we, what we do see is we see Trask. Mm-hmm. So yeah. w- what's what's that the all? Sentinels. Ab- yeah. So what's that all about? Give me a little background with the Sentinels. So, what's it all which about? Also, freaking go on the website. Have you gone on the website? I yeah. saw it. Today. It's pretty I bitching. It. Okay. Holy so moly. what is that? What, okay. what did they do today? Tell me so about that. Wait, what, this, what happened today? Go. Go ahead. Oh, the the, the it's tra- I can't remember I the it website. Came out last week. It came out last week, but okay. you saw the big Sentinel yeah, yeah, image yeah, it's today. Yeah. So it, it's 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 like basically like a to- like Stark weapons. Um, it's website, Stark? but 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 like Stark, but, but it's, it's to fight, trash. but it's okay. Trask, okay. and it's all the inventions they they have Got it. to Battle you know mutants. combat mutants, and they have like slogans, and it's like you know we're we're creating fifty years of you know beautiful yeah. living because no more mutants, and yeah. here's why, okay. and it's really kind of like ooh, jeez, 
That sucks. Okay. You know, all these great weapons, and they're going to kill all these mutants. All right. Okay, so that's all right. And cool. it's basically the villainous build up to, you know, this battle that's been building for the whole time humans versus mutants. Mutants, yeah. Um, so and they're finally going to come to a head, kind of ish. I think it will. Okay. I mean, I know. All right, so I mean, I'm wondering. Well, I, mean, I hope they address the cure from from part three. I hope they don't. Well, I, I want them to address it because I hate that. Yeah, I know. Like, you know like, what I mean? Yeah, well, I want like them Aaron, to erase that. That's what Aaron said, though, too. I hope they just somehow can Yeah, annihilate. Yeah, I agree well, with that, actually, too. Actually, I wrote this down. I'm just looking at my notes from Comic-Con. And Ryan Singer, something else he said about um, erasing X-Men 3. He said, uh, whenever you're going back in time, there are all those risks that things can be deleted. Mm-hmm. And he says, I do believe certain cont- continuity, but some things will change. Yeah. So that's we're pretty great. much guarantee right, that we'll see something. All right, we have, we have like three minutes up, but before you do, we have one more call. Bill, hey, you're in Schmobile. Who do we got? Hey, my name is Cy. I'm from Lexington. Hey, dude, what's going on, man? Hey, um, yeah, one question I had is like, um, so like, so I've seen the Wolverine and um, like the changes for minor, but I didn't really like, like wasn't really like big about it. Like mm-hmm. Iron Man three when they did the whole Mandarin thing, right? And I, I said a few questions, you know, how, like, in the Comic-Con, Josh Whedon was like, Ant-Man's not going to be in the Avengers 2. Right, right. But the bad guys, Ultron, like, I'm just, like, kind of pissed that they're just going to, like, give him a whole new, like, origin story. Mm-hmm. Like, or do you think I should still keep hope that Whedon might just be saying that, but, oh, like... So switch and switch, switch, into, switch into Avengers? Um, yeah, I switched to Avengers real quick. Uh, and it'll be another. I, we're going to definitely talk about that as as it comes on the fu- in the weeks here in ten days of future past. Um, I uh, I like the Ultron thing. I think that we, as far as Thanos goes, you're, I, don't be surprised, man. You're going to see Thanos pop up in, in Guardians of the Galaxy. You're going to get him pretty quick. Well, and if I mean, if you are a comic book reader at all, and you're re- you read the Age of Ultron storyline, you know there there's yeah. some stuff that I feel like could possibly be in Days of Future Past, where you know time traveling and that sort of good stuff. stuff. So there's a lot of crossover and I, you know how this goes. We hear so many things and then the movie comes out and they're like, haha, I said this wasn't going to happen but it totally did. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So thanks for the call, yeah. dude. Thank you very much. Um, okay, guys, so it was a great X-Men podcast. Before we go and we give all the plugs to everybody too, we got to pick our winner for the for the t-shirt. Now here's the tweet and it was talking about Naveed. I'm going to bet this guy probably knows my grandma. Dude knows everyone. Schmoes no podcast, and that nice. came from Joseph Hennings at JPH29. Joseph, go. Uh, go to Facebook.com, Schmoes no, and go ahead and, and just send me a message. Remind me that you won, Joseph, and I will get you that rip shirt. All right, guys, so make sure Aaron Darling from AMC Movies and Aaron, they can find you at, at Aaron A. Darling? Yep, that's right. We're YouTube, Aaron Ashley D. Awesome. And then Mark Riley, the website will be back up tomorrow. Yes, at it will. Tiffany's folks. tweets at that is me. At Josh McCuga, at Schmo's intern, at Cosman, at Johnny Icebox. And make sure you follow my buddy Ellis, Ellis15150. It's Schmo's No Podcast. Back next week. Peace out, Mother F's. Oh.